them a little more more momentum. So we, I wanted to put away that game. That's a big time game. You need to get used to putting away. And then you know, coach at Camden, Camden is Camden. Trevor, you know, you got those athletes down there. They well coach. I called the quarterback my nephew. You know, <laughs> we've been, you know, a lot. I tell you a lot. A lot of these kids I had in elementary. You know, I was gone. I left in thirteen. I left in fourteen. I think some of these guys was kindergartners and first graders. So <laughs> uh, I know quite a few of them. Uh, matter of fact, me and MT. Court, man, MT, we text probably once a week or twice a week, even when we're not playing each other. And it's been going on probably for the last three years. So a uh, fun battle going against a great opponent. Uh, they're not top five in the state for no reason. So we got to come with it and match it. Absolutely. The winner of this game stays right there uh, in contention for a conference championship and a number one seed with Little R- Little Rock Parkview. When you had a chance to scout the Cardinals, Coach, what's going to be the biggest keys to getting a victory over the Redbirds? Man, they play hard. Play real hard on defense, and you know the crazy thing about it is, a, I, I don't know if he get out of the pub. I don't know if any, I don't know if anyone talks about him, but of course, you know Jabari is good. You know, but man, number eighty eight on their defense, he remind me of Jordan Elliott when I coached. Him. <laughs> uh, That's he lines a great up comparison. D, he lines up at DN. He lines up at middle linebacker, and he got one speed and it's full speed. And, if you can get you seven, or you, if you can get you four guys like that on defense, man, you'd be really, really good. And then everything starts with those big boys up front, man, and that quarterback back there. And, you know, he's a dual threat. You know, he can run, he can throw it. Man, he can make nothing out of something. He can make something out of nothing. Uh, then he got great receivers. Of course, I like number three. Uh, and I know number four is leading him in receiving yards, but number three is multi-dimensional receiver, running back. He tough. I like, you know, I like those tough kids. And then they got guys all over, so, man. Man, we, we just got to come with it, man. got to tackle in space. And whoever competes the hardest, whoever can get the penalties down, whoever can cut the turnovers down and, and, and eliminate the big plays because, you know, we, we live off the big – well, our receivers live off the big plays, not our old line and running backs. And, you know, MT is a big play guy, whether it's throwing the strike down the middle or whether it's running for 35 when it should have been a sack. You know, little things like that can just crush you. So uh, penalties, man, line of scrimmage, turnover battle, and who's going to eliminate those big plays is going to come Friday. So uh, that's going to be the keys to winning. That was Daryl Burnett, former defensive coordinator at Camden Fairview when the Cardinals won a state championship in 2012 with Buck James. Now the head coach at Hot Springs joining us on our Summit Utility Centerpoint Energy Studio lines. We're going to have to step away for a quick timeout, but when we come back, we'll check out Class 4A and 3A on the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas High School Game Day Show. In the communities we serve, we know your energy is best spent on the things you enjoy. That's why we're helping you save your energy with natural gas. With twice the efficiency of electrical appliances, save your energy for taco night. Or singing in the shower with faster water heater recovery. Even for cozier comfort with gas dryers and fireplaces. All while doing a little more to save the planet. So save your energy and money with natural gas. And if you already are, keep saving with Summit Utilities. Learn more at summitutilities.com benefits. Joe Klein here for Beth Saracen, Arkansas's favorite sports betting app. You bet it is, Joe, and football is in the air, which means Bet Saracen has everything you're looking for and more right there on your cell phone. Now everyone can get in the game and follow your favorite team. And that's right on the money. If putting down a little wager makes your favorite game a little more exciting, we'll go to the app stores and download Bet Saracen. We even got a demo video to show you how to play. Or find it at BetSaracen.com. The love of football defines fall weekends and in many homes, our families. But it's a demanding sport that can cause injury. That's why UAMS Health Orthopedics and Sports Medicine is on sidelines and in locker rooms for high schools and colleges across the state, ready to care for athletes with clinics in Central and Northwest Arkansas. UAMS Health, official orthopedics and sports medicine provider for Razorback Athletics and future Razorbacks all over Arkansas. Learn more at UAMS.health team. Located in a beautiful, quiet part of Arkansas, Southern Arkansas University offers personalized tour visits, faculty, and staff who invest in student success and a caring campus community. SAU allows you to choose from over 100 degrees and four distinct colleges and the school graduate studies. SAU not only offers a broad range of academic programs, including unique offerings to the state and region, but the first university south of Little Rock to offer a doctoral degree through the College of Education. Start calling SAU your home today by applying at saumag.edu. Go Mule Riders! 
A lot of cities claim to be unique, but are they really? Were they the off-season playground for legends like Babe Ruth and Al Capone? Do they sell beer made from thermal spring water that comes straight from the ground below? Do any of these places have a street that has a gangster museum on one side of the road and a national park on the other? Let me go ahead and answer that for you. They don't. Because none of them is Hot Springs, Arkansas. It's different here. Come see why. Simmons Bank, nominated by Forbes magazine as a top U.S. bank, takes great pride in investing in our friends and neighbors. For more than 100 years, we've worked to make our customers' dreams come true, earning trust with convenient and reliable financial tools, checking in savings accounts, home and consumer loans, small business loans, and low-rate credit cards. Wherever you are on your financial journey, we're there with you every step of the way. Simmons Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender, subject to credit approval. Arkansas State Parks are your passport to all kinds of adventures. And camping is just the beginning. Our parks can take you hiking, kayaking, mountain biking, fishing, and some of them can even take you back in time. Our 52 state parks offer fun, adventure, history, and so much more. So pick up your passport at any state park visitor center. Visit ArkansasStateParks.com and see where we can take you next. Back on the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas High School Game Day show, where we will now look at the rankings for Class 4A in the top five of Rex's Road to the Rock rankings, brought to you by Blue Cross and Blue Shield, which is once again unchanged from last week. Arkadelphia is still number one, while Shiloh Christian remains at number two after a 51-30 win over Farmington. Number three is still Warren, coming off a 34 to nothing shutout over Monticello. Number four is Harding Academy, which topped Riverview 4 44 to 6 while Star City is still number 5 after beating Hamburg 36 to 0. The big matchup in Class 4A this week, however, will be between Nashville and the Malvern Leopards in a key 7-4A contest. And joining us now on the Centerpoint Energy Summit Utility Studio lines is the head coach of the Nashville Scrappers, Mike Valerovich. So coach, uh Tell us a little bit about how the uh, season has gone so far. I know you guys are bouncing back from a tough one and everything, but it looks like you've been rolling pretty good here as of late. Yeah, we we managed to to pick up wins our last, you know, over the last month or so. I guess our last three weeks, we've been able to have some wins, and you know, we're we're, we're pretty healthy right now, so we we feel good about that. Obviously, excited about the big game with Malvern on Friday. Yeah, and this is such a tough conference. It seems like a, a Super Bowl matchup, like week in and week out and everything. Uh, but playing that great competition really uh, prepares you for postseason. And, uh, I mean, you you shouldn't be scared to back down from anybody at this point, right? Yeah, you know, the 7-4 has always been a tough conference. Obviously, it's changed up a little bit this, this year. Um, but, you know, we were able to add two uh, really tough non-conference games that we've played already in Charleston and um, with Magnolia. And, you know, we felt by picking up those games, it's obviously they're good competitions to two really good football teams. And, you know, that's aside from the normal 7-4A conference that, we've, that we normally play. So, yeah, we feel like this year, you know, it's, it's, it's been good. And like I said, we're excited. Plenty of opportunity to pick up uh, non-conference games with only six teams in the conference and everything. But, Coach, when you, when you reviewed film and did your scouting and everything, what's going to be the biggest keys to getting a victory when you face the Malvern Leopards on Friday? Well, I think Malvern obviously is a very talented team. You know, they probably have arguably, you know, the, the four best players in our whole conference all on their football team obviously uh you know the quarterbacks played a lot of reps for them been there since he's been a freshman you know their big offensive tackle uh obviously with division one you know he's a division one football player i think they probably have best running back in the conference and you know he's leading four a in rushing and i think he's third in the state and the, and the dupree kid runs the ball real well and they have others you know they have uh, the caradine kid at receiver and defensive back who's been very dynamic their, I think their fullback is a very good player. Uh, you know, they're just really good all around. And, you know, keys to beating them, obviously, I think, is trying to contain their running game. You know, I think their 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 football team goes through their rushing attack. They have a lot of yards rushing and a lot of rushing touchdowns this year. So we're going to have to tackle extremely well. And then offensively, when we have a chance to get the football, you know, we have to put it in the end zone. And, um, you know, they've been very good on defense as well. And uh, they have some very good players on that side of the ball, too. So we're going to have to execute 
and take advantage when we have our opportunities to. Some outstanding comments there from the Nashville scrapper skipper, Mike Valeric, with that big game coming up against Malvern. Other big games in 4A include Elkins at Gentry while Gravit travels to Ozark. Stuttgart will take on Lone Oak while Blyville will be on the road at Pocahontas. Truman will host Rivercrest while Lamar travels to Clinton. And Ashdown takes on Mina while DeWitt will visit McGee and Star City host Monticello. In Class 3A, Rex's road to the Rock rankings is unchanged for the top three as Prescott rolled to a 47 to 20 win over Smackover. Number two, Ryzen slipped past Lake Village 49 to 34. And Charleston, number three, beat number four, Boonville 42 to 14. That means there's a new number four as Melbourne moves up from number five by beating Newport 29 to 20. And Center Point takes over at number five, defeating Paris 42 to 7. Some of the big games in 4A this week will be Center Point traveling to Glen Rose while Ryzen takes on Barton and Harmony Grove travels to Lake Village. We're going to go ahead and take our final time out, but when we return, we'll wrap things up with the Class 2A rankings on the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas High School Game Day Show. Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas deliver reliable, affordable power to more than 60% of Arkansas, the field we call home. The 17 dedicated electrical cooperatives around the state manage over 75,000 miles of power lines, delivering power to more than half a million homes, farms, businesses, and of course, football fields, improving the lives of communities and their residents all across Arkansas. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas, the power to play, the power to deliver. I'm Rex Nelson. Outside of the state's natural beauty, the thing that strikes me most as I travel Arkansas is the junk in yards and trash along the highways. In a place that markets itself as the natural state, we've too often been guilty of, at best, ignoring our natural treasures, at worst, polluting and littering them. Let's take pride in our state by keeping it litter-free. Visit KeepArkansasBeautiful.com to get involved. This message brought to you by this station, the Arkansas Broadcasters Association, and the Keep Arkansas Beautiful Commission. Poultry is the leading agricultural industry in Arkansas, and the Poultry Federation is the voice to promote it. Did you know that the industry provides 170,000 jobs in our state? In fact, over 6,500 farms in Arkansas produce some type of poultry. And in 2020, the poultry industry provided $3.7 billion of the total agricultural cash receipts. From providing scholarships to protecting interest at the state capitol, the Poultry Federation is the proud voice of the poultry industry. And the communities we serve, we know your energy is best spent on the things you enjoy. That's why we're helping you save your energy with natural gas. With twice the efficiency of electrical appliances, save your energy for taco night. Or singing in the shower with faster water heater recovery. Even for cozier comfort with gas dryers and fireplaces. All while doing a little more to save the planet. So save your energy and money with natural gas. And if you already are, keep saving with Summit Utilities. Learn more at summitutilities.com slash benefits. Joe Klein here for Bet Saracen, Arkansas's favorite sports betting app. You bet it is, Joe, and football is in the air, which means Bet Saracen has everything you're looking for and more right there on your cell phone. Now everyone can get in the game and follow your favorite team. And that's right on the money. If putting down a little wager makes your favorite game a little more exciting, we'll go to the app stores and download Bet Saracen. We even got a demo video to show you how to play. Or find it at BetSaracen.com. Simmons Bank, nominated by Forbes magazine as a top U.S. bank, takes great pride in investing in our friends and neighbors. For more than 100 years, we've worked to make our customers' dreams come true, earning trust with convenient and reliable financial tools, checking in savings accounts, home and consumer loans, small business loans, and low-rate credit cards. Wherever you are on your financial journey, we're there with you every step of the way. Simmons Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender, subject to credit approval. I get scared sometimes. Of a lot of things. Joining in. Decisions. The dark. The dark. But I once heard someone say. But as I always say. It's okay to be afraid. As long as you face the fear. And keep moving forward. Wherever you are in life, count on the name trusted in insurance for more than 70 years. Arkansas Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Live fearless. 
If you think making false threats is a joke, think again. Any communication threatening students, teachers, and staff at schools or public places is a federal crime that could lock people behind prison doors for up to five years. I'm FBI Deputy Director David Bowditch, making you aware that hoax threats have real consequences. We don't want to see a young person begin their adult lives with a felony record. Making false threats is not a joke. Think before you post. Visit FBI.gov. Back on the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas High School Game Day Show, where we'll wrap things up looking at the rankings in Class 2A. Rex's Road to the Rock rankings is unchanged from last week as Hazen remains number one following its 46 to nothing shutout of Episcopal Collegiate. Carlisle easily worked its way past Baptist Prep by the score of 48 to 13. Bigelow beat Johnson County Westside 44 to 14 to stay at number three, while Mount Ida top Mineral Springs 35 to six and number five Mark Tree beat Charleston by the score of 44 to 30. Some big games in Class 2A this week. We'll see Bigelow on the road at Conway Christian, while Earl heads over to Charleston, and Poyan will take on Mineral Springs, while Carlisle travels over to England, and Hampton takes on Little Rock Episcopal. So there you have it, folks. We hope you've enjoyed the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas High School Game Day show. And we hope you'll tune back in tonight at 10 p.m. Central for the Simmons Bank Friday Night High School Scoreboard Show. Rex Nelson and Nate Olson will take you all the way up to midnight with scores, interviews, and the all-new Rex's Road to the Rock rankings. Coaches, journalists, play-by-play guys, be sure to call in your scores at 501-298-BALL. That's 501-298-2255 so we can get every score in the state in tonight's Simmons Bank Friday Night High School Scoreboard Show. Today's broadcast has been brought to you by Simmons Bank, Centers Point Energy and Summit Utilities, UAMS Health Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, Arkansas Delta Byways Regional Tourism, the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas, Hot Springs, Keep Arkansas Beautiful, Saracen Casino Resort in Pine Bluff, the Arkansas Scholarship Lottery, Arkansas Brighter Future 529, in partnership with Arkansas Tourism and State Parks, the Poultry Federation, Lion College in Batesville, Tim Griffin for Arkansas Attorney General Campaign, Arkansas Blue Cross and Blue Shield, Southern Arkansas University in Magnolia, the Murphy's Art District in El Dorado, Arkansas Rice, Washita Baptist University, and the Great American Conference. Folks, I'm Kelly Blair. I hope you've enjoyed listening half as much as I've enjoyed talking sports with you. Come on back and join us again next week on the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas High School Game Day Show. special sports presentation from the EAB Sports Network. It's time for Nettleton High School football on 101.3 Bob FM. Presented by NEA Baptist, Domino's Pizza, Jonesboro Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, First National Bank, and Kavanaugh Auto Group. Now let's go to the NEA Baptist broadcast booth and join Craig Miller for the First National Bank pregame show. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to week nine of the 2022 Raider football season. Tonight, we're right across town at the Valley View Blazer Stadium, where the Raiders are going to be taking on Valley View in a key conference 5A East showdown. My name is Craig Miller, and I am joined here in the NEA Baptist broadcast position. Not by Jacob Linderman, who's been calling the games with me all year. We've given we're giving Jacob the night off, but I'm joined by my old tag team partner, the one and only Andy Shatley. Andy, welcome back. Good evening, Craig. It's a, always exciting to sit up in the booth and watch uh, uh, a phenomenal football game, and uh, and tonight just really really builds up to be a great experience to be able to watch these kids uh, uh, display their talent on the field. We have two. 
uh, perfectly matched teams all the way up and down the stat board, all the way up and down the record board. Beautiful night for football, seeing all these seniors on the field. Uh, you, you, you can imagine how excited they are to play football tonight. No doubt about it. I want to give credit where credit is due. Andy has labeled this the rumble in the rice fields. <laughs> rumble. Well, that's just the first thing that came in mind. You know, you down here on the south part of town and Valley View historically is kind of an agricultural, you know, community. But, but uh, this doesn't look like a rice field. This is an absolute beautiful uh, stadium here, Central Dealership Stadium here at Valley View. They have a nice, nice field here. Have a nice field and have a very nice team. The Blazers are coming into tonight's contest 7-1. and one, And first place in the 5A East with a perfect 5-0 and o record. They lost their first game 51-35 to 35 to Class 4A Powerhouse Harding Academy. Well, since then, they've gone on a seven-game winning streak. They've got victories over... Popular Bluff, Rivercrest, Paragould, Forest City, Wynn, Brooklyn, and Southside. The Raiders are also coming into this game with a 7-1 record. They defeated Mountain Home, Pocahontas, and Blyville in non-conference action. Then when conference play started, they've defeated Brooklyn, Paragould, Southside, and Forest City. They lost a heartbreaker in the midst of those at Batesville, but they have not been beaten since. So... The Raiders are in second place in conference with a four and one mark. They're tied for second place with Wynn and Batesville. A win tonight would put the Raiders into a tie for first place in conference with one more game to go next week whenever we host the Wynn Yellow Jackets. Needless to say, Andy, this is a very important game when you talk about playoff implications. Well, really, it's an important game for both teams. You know, Valley View uh, coming in, being undefeated in conference, and Nettleton only have one loss. And <laughs> You know, if you think about it, the, this matchup here is one play away from being two undefeated teams in conference uh, playing each other. That's how evenly matched this game is coming into tonight. But the playoff implications of the seeding and, and who you potentially could face is huge, and it happens tonight for Nettleton to start with. And we definitely don't want to look too far in advance the next Friday night because you have to take care of business tonight, the Raiders do. No doubt about that, and hopefully the Raiders will do that. We're about to take a three-minute break. When we come back, we're going to hear from Nettleton's coach, Stephen Hampton. He's going to talk about last week's win over Forest City and, of course, tonight's big game against Valley View. It's the Raiders. It's the Blazers. It's a crosstown showdown on NTV and the EAB Sports Network. Follow me on a new healthcare journey full of possibilities. Experience world-class care delivered by friends, family, and neighbors right here in your community, bringing industry-leading technology to you, not the other way around. Your health record, your appointment scheduling, and your medications all in one place, and your lab results delivered the instant they're recorded. Do we look at healthcare differently? Absolutely. Experience the difference and you will too. NEA Baptist, healthcare for the next century. Bump it up at First National Bank. Now offering two CD specials with competitive interest and a one-time bump during the original term of the CD with no penalty. That means if you sign up and the rate goes up, you can bump it up. A 16-month CD at 2.51% annual percentage yield or a 26-month CD at 3.01% APY. Visit fnbank.net slash specials to lock in your rate today. Offer valid as of 928 2022 Penalty for early withdrawal. $1,000 minimum opening balance to open rates subject to change. Member FDIC equal housing lender. Get huge savings now at every Kavanaugh dealership. Kavanaugh has a great selection of late model, low mileage, certified pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs. And most are still under factory warranty. We have every make, every model, so you're sure to find the vehicle you want. And when you buy it, Kavanaugh, every new and used purchase comes with one year free maintenance. Plus, we buy a car. Bring a vehicle, get a check. Come see us today at one of our dealerships or go to KavanaughCars.com. The home team at Jonesboro Orthopedics and Sports Medicine is proud to welcome Dr. Asa Schneichel. Dr. Schneichel's an Ace State alum and is Northeast Arkansas's only joint revision surgeon, specializing in several forms of joint replacement. He joins the Jonesboro Sports and Orthopedics team with more than 40 years' experience in getting you back in the game. So if you have a sports injury, just some nagging aches, or even need help with concussion management, call JOSM at 932-1820 to schedule an appointment. Jonesboro Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, excelling in our field so you could excel on yours. You raised your family here, did every July 4th here, refinished the floors here twice, sized up your daughter's boyfriends here, waited in the doorway all day when your son was coming home on leave, 
This place has given you all you've dreamed of, and now it's giving again in the form of a gourmet kitchen and the quietest dishwasher known to man. Realize your dream with a home equity line of credit from Simmons Bank. Dreams realized. SimmonsBank.com. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender subject to credit approval. It's a mix and match special now at all Jonesboro area Domino's Pizza locations. Choose any two for $5.99 each for carryout or $6.99 each for delivery. How about a medium two-topping pizza, oven-baked sandwich, pasta in a tin, Domino stuffed cheesy bread, salad, bread twists, marble brownies, and so much more. Switch it up for lunch or dinner for the whole game. The mix and match special with any two for only $5.99 each for carryout or $6.99 each for delivery. Only at your Jonesboro area Domino's Pizza locations. We're here with Coach Stephen Hanson. Hampton for our weekly visit on the first National Bank pregame show. Coach Hampton, we've obviously got a huge game here tonight, but before we get to it, let's talk about last week's win over Forest City. I would call it a hard-fought win, and it seems like we always get the Mustangs' best shot. Yeah, the no doubt. Um, you know, you can kind of throw records out, out the window, and, um, you know, it really doesn't matter what has happened up till that point in the season whenever we play four city we know that we're going to get their best shot i mean there's just so many connections between you know our players and and their players and um you know they're going to play hard and they they did friday night they played really really hard and uh you know they got some you know athletic kids and kind of probably the largest (laughs) offensive line that we've played against um you know and so uh they got some nice pieces and they played played really well and uh you know, it was. It was a hard-fought victory for sure. Good to get a victory, no doubt about that. Let's talk about your offense last Friday night. Your ground game was extremely effective against the Mustangs, right at 250 yards rushing for the night. Was that something that y'all planned going in, or was that just kind of a case of taking what the defense gave you? Well, uh, I think it was, It was. you know, we wanted to run the football. Um, and then, you know, taking what they give us as well. Once we got into the game, um, you know, we took took a few shots, you know, but they were pretty pretty dead set with their safeties on keeping those guys back. And, uh, you know, any time a team is, is going to play, you know, two high safeties and keep those guys back and not use them and run support, then, then you have to be able to run the football. Um, and so we were able to do that effectively. Key Andre Pope had one of his best games of the season last week, 23 carries for 128 yards, but then he took a big hit in the third quarter and had to leave the game. What exactly happened there, and how is Key Andre doing? Well, you know, he got hit kind of right under the chin, so it's kind of like, you know, a, a boxer. You know, they get hit and uh, kind of stuns them for a minute, and that was the case. Uh, and uh, so precaution, you know, we felt like, you know, game, you know, we had the game in hand. We get him out of the game. Let's be safe, you know, and and, um, and so got him out of there. Um, but but he's been he's been fine this week, uh, and so he should be good good to go Friday. Kylan Shelton also had a big night at running back last week. Ten carries, 52 yards. He had about a 70-yard touchdown run called back on the penalty. Will we see Kylan run the ball more as we go forward? Yeah, he's one that, you know, we wanted to get him more carries throughout the year and just for different reasons. Uh, it just hasn't happened because, you know, one, there's been times where he's been dinged up. Uh, and two, I mean, he's so valuable in defense. He's a starter uh, on that side of the ball. Um, and so, uh, but Friday night, you know, out of necessity, we had to get him in there, and he got, got you know, 10 carries, uh, 52 yards, I believe, uh, ran. You know, he, he's, I think him and Keandre really complement each other in their running styles. Um, and so, yeah, he's, you know, we want to get him the ball more uh, kind of down the stretch here and, uh, you know, kind of split some of the carries between him and Keandre. Your passing game has accounted for most of your offensive yards this season, and Maddox threw for over 100 yards and three touchdowns Friday night. We've talked all season about Curtis Smith and Q Thompson, but we had a couple of new guys catch t- touchdown passes Friday night. Yeah, uh, you know, we've been repping the, the H Street play for several weeks and um, just – you know, didn't have the right situation up until Friday night, and we felt like it was the right time. Um, and obviously, uh, you know, Maddox made a good throw. They were uh, really converging on the run down there around the goal line, and, um, you know, it, it was really you know, I'm, I'm proud and, and happy to, to get AD. You know, a touchdown, he works hard. He's even been playing and blocking extremely well for us. So, uh, you know, it, it was exciting to get him in the end zone. So. 
your defense came up with a couple of big goal line stops Friday night. It seems like they've been doing that for y'all all season long. Yeah, they're very opportunistic, um, you know, and uh, kind of a bend but don't break and mentality. And But, you know, when they get backed up, they, you know, it seems, you know, they come alive, they make a play. You know, guys like Jordan Pegram, Blake Brown, Cam Phillips, uh, now Keon Stallings is uh, starting to get in on the act, you know, and uh, those guys just seem to have a knack for, for making plays in crucial moments. Brendan Alexander got his first interception last week. That was awfully good to see. Yeah, that was great. Um, you know, proud for Brandon. Um, you know, he's played well all season. And, uh, got an opportunity to, to get him a pick. And, uh, you know, uh, I was excited for him. I've noticed that Nathaniel Gunsmith has been playing more playing time on defense last week. That young man has really emerged as a good player for you this season. He really has. You know, and this is his first year to play football, which he's been playing all along. Um, but, you know, it started off, he just he wasn't. Coach Hampton, who were your players of the week last week? We'll start with the offensive side of the ball. Well, on offense, we had three outstanding performers. Uh, you mentioned Keandre Pope, 23 carries, 128 yards. Uh, Curtis Smith, you know, both receiving and rushing, had a great uh, outstanding game. And then our offensive lineman of the week was Colby Miller. A young man comes from some very good genetic stock, from what I understand. Yeah, I think uh, I've heard that it's mostly from his mom's side. <laughs> no doubt about that. Let's talk defensive players of the week. Who uh, who got that honor last week? Well, outstanding performers on the defensive side. Blake Brown continues to play outstanding. He's our leading tackler. They had 13 tackles on, on Friday, a tackle for loss, a fumble recovery. Uh, and then uh, Cam Phillips was the other. Uh, had a couple of tackles for loss um, and played. You know, he's, he seems to be getting better and better each week. Uh, and we'll need him. Uh, down the stretch, especially because teams are going to start trying to run away from Jordan. And uh, if he can come alive and play play like he's been playing, uh, you know, and make it tough on offenses. Special teams players of the week last week. Well, uh, Nathaniel Gonzalez again on kickoff coverage, had a couple of tackles. Uh, but then Colin Shelton had two solo tackles on punt coverage. Um, so those two were our special teams players of the week. Coach, tonight we've got our crosstown rivals, the Valley View Blazers. Now, this is always a big game. But they're coming in tonight in first place in conference. They scored a big win over win a few weeks ago. I know you've watched a lot of film on them. What can we expect from the Blazers tonight? Well, offensively, um, they do a really good job of spreading you out. Um, you know, they're spread offense. They, they've got a really good uh, running back, Slade Caldwell. Um, you know, he's an SEC commit for baseball. Um, you know, plays outfield, so he can run. Uh, and then the quarterback is also, you know, a very, very elusive uh, a runner. So that kind of two-headed monster makes it makes it really difficult to key in uh, on one guy. Uh, and they do a really good job. And then, you know, they really – they're running kind of a triple option offense just out of a, a spread formation where, you know, you've got the running back, quarterback, and then they run a lot of the bubbles and hitch screens off of it so the quarterback has the option to throw. So, um, you know, it puts your defense in a bind. It puts you in a lot of one-on-one -on -one situations where, you know, it may be the quarterback and a safety out in space and you've got, you got to make that tackle. Um, and so, you know, we got to be really good tacklers on Friday night. Coach, I know some weeks are harder than others to get you guys motivated in practice. I would say that that has not been a problem this week. No, our guys, they know. Um, obviously, there's a lot of familiarity. Our guys know know their guys, and, um, you know, it's cross-town rival and, and all that. And, um, you know, really, we've kind of stressed our, our guys that sometimes these games get, you know, made up – it's still football 
and it comes down to blocking and tackling and doing the fundamentals. And so you kind of have to keep your emotions in check a little bit. And, and, and as long as you channel that in the right way, um, you know, and so we, we got to be good fundamentally. You know, we got to go out and block them and tackle them and throw and catch and do all those things. And um, that's really what it's going to boil down to. Coach, how are we doing health-wise and injury-wise? Uh, you know, at this time of year, I think everybody's got bumps and bruises, and we're no different. Um, but, you know, as far as somebody being out, you know, we're, we're going to have everybody available uh, that we've been having. Um, you know, Jamie still, you know, he's got a he's got a bum shoulder, and he just going to play through it. And I think Dr. Swim said, you know, I, we'll fix it after the, after the season. Uh, you know, brace it up and – Let's go. Uh, yeah, we got other guys with with you know bumps and bruises, but it's just that time of year. You gotta you gotta go, and uh, you know I think our guys will rise to the challenge. Coach, let's talk keys to victory. We are seven and one. They are seven and one. What are the Raiders going to have to do tonight to beat the Blazers and move to eight and one on the season? Well, defensively, we're gonna we're gonna have to tackle well. We're gonna have to uh, you know stop their run game. Um, and uh you know i think i think our, our guys are ready and um uh, coach johnson's got a great plan you know and so now we got to go out and execute it you know for us offensively we got to execute and be consistent um you know i think you know that they're the kind of defense that uh it's tough to go eight ten plays because they you know they expect you to make a mistake and they're able to capitalize so we got to be consistent execute uh throw and catch um you know, and I think we've got some good things in. I think, you know, um, I feel really good about uh, the plan we've got. And so now we just got to go execute it. And then special teams always comes into play. Um, you know, I think, you know, hopefully we can win that, that area. Uh, we've got, you know, a few wrinkles there as well. And so um, we just got to go play and, 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 you know, not turn the ball over and hopefully, you know, get a turnover ourselves. Uh, play good sound football. Coach, good luck tonight. Let's go get a win for Raider Nation. Let's do it. Go Raiders. Raider proud, brother. Elite Eye Care has a new Jonesboro location that is now open at 2100 East Highland near the Old Indian Mall. Hey, it's Brandon Baxter, and the team at Elite Eye Care is who my family trusts for their personal eye care. Elite Eye Care specializes in eye care solutions for patients of all ages, and you can be assured that your family is cared for like their own. Schedule your appointment at EliteEyeCareAndOptical.com or call 972-6040. Elite Eye Care at 2100 East Highland in Jonesboro and at 1515 West Kings Highway in Paragool. Elite Eye Care. Your vision is our focus. A few years ago, a friend of mine was going to town to have lunch with the president of a college that he supported. He was stopped for speeding and the trooper asked for his driver's license and Jim said, I don't have my driver's license, they're in my billfold at home. The trooper asked why his billfold was at home. He said, I'm having lunch with the college president and the last thing you want to take with you is your billfold. Best price, best service. Glenn Sane and God bless our kids. Farmers and Merchants Bank announces the lobby of our new branch in Jonesboro is now open. The drive through is an MVP center with live video tellers 7 to 7 weekdays and 9 till noon on Saturdays. So in addition to our beautiful bank on Highland, you can also visit our new branch at the corner of Southwest Drive and Parker. More MVPs, more ATMs, more me banking at Farmers and Merchants Bank, member FDIC. Kids grow up so fast, and so has the Arkansas Children's Hospital Jonesboro Clinic. This is our clinic's 10th year of creating healthier tomorrows for the kids in Northeast Arkansas. There's no need to cross the river or hit the highway for your cardiology or diabetes needs. Road trips are for fun, not for health care. The team at Arkansas Children's Hospital Jonesboro Clinic is celebrating by doing what we always do, giving your kids more time to be kids. Learn more at archildrens.org slash Jonesboro. Nettleson High School Athletics is brought to you by Gateway Tire and Service Center and Toyo Tires. Where there's always one thing you can count on, we go the distance for you. Before you hit the road for a trip across country or across town, drop by Gateway Tire and Service Center and check out the great deals on Toyo Tires. Whether it's tires or auto repair, you can always count on one thing. At Gateway Tire and Toyo Tires, we go the distance for you. At Gateway Tire and Paragold and Jonesboro, we go the distance for you. Hello, I'm estate planning and elder law attorney Chad Oldham. 
More and more often today, I hear clients tell me that the only thing golden about the golden years is that it takes all the gold to grow old. Don't be a victim of rising health care and nursing home cost. Be prepared. Have a plan. Contact us today to find out how we help our clients protect and preserve assets for family and future generations. The Oldham Law Firm, 603 Southwest Drive in Jonesboro, or visit us on the web at oldhamlawfirm.com. And we welcome you back to the First National Bank pregame show. We are oh, about six minutes away from kickoff here at Valley View. And tonight is the Raiders versus the Valley View Blazers. At this point in the pregame show, Andy, I always like to go over the Raiders' history against their opponents. The Raiders and Blazers started playing each other in 2010. I know you graduated in 1994, a class that many consider to be maybe the best class since 1989. But you never played Valley View in football whenever you're going no, to No, there's not a long history between these schools uh, due to the Valley View program not having a football program. You know, the growth of the school has really propelled them into kind of the necessity of having a football program. I remember their very first football program with Bryce Bennett uh, playing quarterback. And, uh, you know, they had a uh, – they, they tried to put together a competitive team. And Randy Coleman was their head coach back in the day. So, they've come a long way in a very short time. They certainly have. That, the first year that they, that they played Nettleton was 2010. By then, they had things figured out, and they were a very competitive football program. Nettleton was down that year. I remember that. Valley View won that first game. And since then, it has been a very even um, rivalry. In fact, the two teams have played 11 times. And the all-time record is five and five and one. We well, beat them. well, that's not surprising. That's about how tightly this game is coming in tonight with all the stats. And the head-to-head -head is even tied up. So, I'm that's not right. real sure what the odds or the line on this game would be. Well, I don't know either. It's It should be a dandy for sure. Um, and the coin toss is going on right now. We'll kind of take a little break in the history lesson with uh, – by telling you what, who won the coin toss and who decided to do what. It looks like Valley View may have won the toss. Let's see. The referee will tell us. Nettleton has won the toss, and they have elected to receive. So Nettleton's offense will be taking the field first. But as we said, the teams that played 11 times, it's 5-5 five and five and 1. Um, if you're into – scores, which I am, and especially being a Nettleton guy, I wanted to say this stat. We've actually outscored Valley View 243 to 191. So that's a, uh, that's a small moral victory right there in a, a rivalry that has been very, very even. Now, Andy, I don't know if you believe in common opponents, comparing scores with common opponents. You know, you and I have gone back and forth on this. I'm not just a huge fan of that because uh, you, you do, there, there is a, an environment and atmosphere tonight there is a current environment and an atmosphere tonight that has to be played that sometimes nothing in the past has any bearing on tonight. But I'll I tell you what, I, indulge me. Well, I'm going to, I'm gonna, um, based on your opinion on the matter, I'm not even going to do it. I'm not even going to compare the scores because you and Coach Hawk both said don't compare <laughs> scores. <laughs> That's the, if me and Coach Hawk agree on that, then it's got to be the right thing. <laughs> That's right. It's two men that I greatly respect. Both said, don't be comparing scores. So, why in the world should I do such a thing whenever you and Coach Hawk said, don't compare scores? Let's just say that they're coming in very evenly matched tonight, no doubt about that. Um, the Raiders starting lineups, they are as follows. We'll start with the offense, and we're going to start on the offensive line, the guys that don't get their name called very often, don't get their names in the paper, and don't get the credit that they really deserve. So, we'll start with them. The offensive line for the Raiders. Left to right, left tackles, Kylan Gates. Left guard, Ian Landrum. The center is Zach Davis. The right guard is Kobe Miller, and the right tackle is Garrett Campbell. Now, Andy, I know last year you called just about every game with me. Strong offensive line. We've lost a couple of very good uh, linemen from last year, a couple, three very good linemen, Moses Williams and um, Alan Campbell and uh, Ryan Crawford. All three lost to graduation, but – They've reloaded. That offensive line's done a good job this year. Well, absolutely. I've seen them play the last couple of times. And, uh, you know, honestly, uh, depending on what you have, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to reload. Sometimes the game plan, you can you can tailor your game plan to what your offensive line can do. Maybe they can move better out in space. 
Maybe they can run block better or pass block better. So, uh, you know, tailoring your pl- your game plan towards what you have in the offensive line is is something that Coach Hampton has been very good at over the years. The skill guys for the Raiders, Maddox Hampton at quarterback, running back Keandre Pope, the wide receivers, Curtis Smith, Braylon King, Q Thompson, and Caleb Tedder. And that is some very good skill guys. We're just about a minute and a half away from getting from the kickoff, and it looks like we may actually kick off a little bit earlier than that. So let me run through the defensive starters real quick, and then we may come back and uh, talk about some specifics or maybe give Andy a chance to give his keys to victory if you want to. But the defensive starters, Jordan Pegram on the defensive line, along with Cam Phillips, Caden Newsom, Keon Stallings. The linebackers are Blake Brown, Colin Shelton, and Cohen Liggins. The defensive backfield, Brendan Alexander, Derek Island, Miles Williams, and Jamie Morris. And, Andy, it looks like they're ready to kick this thing off. So um, we will – Hold off on the keys to victory and hold off on any kind of defensive stats that we were going to give you. But the Blazers are kicking off, and they're going to be moving left to right on your radio dial. They are dressed in all blue. Nettleton is dressed in all white tonight with their gold helmets. Back deep for the Raiders is Keandre Pope and Q Thompson. The kick is deep. Keandre Pope fields it at the 15, makes a move and is still on his feet. Finally, he is brought down at about the 28-yard line, and that's where the Raiders will take over first and 10. Well, Craig, I mean, we can just go ahead and roll into these keys to victory because, honestly, uh, uh, starting with the first key to victory, in my mind, is when you have two teams that are very, very evenly matched statistically and on the field, there's two things that come to mind, and one is the ability to control the football and the possession of the football, and that comes with the running game. And so to see whether or not Nettleton's offensive line is going to be able to control the line of scrimmage and to run the football effectively. Maddox Sampton from the gun. He's going to pass it on first down. It is complete on the far sideline. Gain of about five yards. That is Curtis Smith, the uh, receiver who made the catch. It's going to be a gain of four, second down and six. Well, you know, your two playmakers for Nettleton, you know, both hovering around 700 yards uh, passing and both about nine and ten touchdowns, you definitely want to give them as many touches as possible. The Mad Dog from the gun gives the ball to Curtis Smith. Jet sweep, and it is snuffed out by the Blazers. They tackle him in the backfield. Tackle for a loss. It's going to be third down and seven for the Raiders. Well, that was a great job by Cal Richardson. He actually shot the gap right there. That was a slow uh, developing play, and he caught that in the backfield. So third down and seven for the Raiders. They've got twins right, twins left. Keandre Pope is lined up as the H-back. And Maddox Hampton in an empty backfield on a definite passing down. He's passes. It is incomplete. Incomplete, it looks like receiver might have run the wrong route there, Andy. Incomplete, and it's going to be fourth down and seven for the Raiders, and they're going to have to punt. Well, great job by the Valley View defense. So, you know, Nettleton certainly looked like they wanted to come in and, and put the ball in the air early. You know, I, what, I, what I've talked in the, in the past is scripted plays in the first ten plays and formations to see how the defense was going to line up to your personnel. Uh, you know, a, a three and out, here we go with a punt. Uh, so, Valley View definitely has to look at that as a win in the first series. Curtis Smith punt is a low line drive, and it goes out of bounds right about midfield. So Valley View is going to take over with very good field position after they stop the Raiders three and out. The Nettleton 48-yard line is where the ball is marked, and Valley View, Valley View's offense will take over for the first time tonight. They are averaging right at as many points per game as the Raiders are, 33 points per game, both teams. Well, Craig, that that leads me into my second keys to victory for Nettleton is when you, once again, when you have two teams that are so closely matched, you have to really start looking at the special teams because that's where some crazy stuff happens. And so field position and special teams will become very important tonight. Turley, the quarterback, he's passing on first down. It is complete to number 81. We'll get you his name in just a second. He's brought down by Blake Brown, 81. That is Mark Wilson. That's going to be a gain of five, second down and five for the Blazers. Well, it's certainly not surprising to anybody who's watched Nettleton football for the last two years to see who made the first tackle of the game for Nettleton. 
I think that moves him up close to almost 80 or 90 tackles this year already. 90 tackles on the season. Turley's running this one. He is tackled by Jordan Pegram leading the stop. He falls forward for a gain of a couple. It's going to be second down, excuse me, third down and two. I really think, you know, I'm going to go back to my initial keys to victory. Those teams that are being able to control the line of scrimmage and run the football, I think that establishing the run is going to complement your passing game tonight. Nettleton with four men on the line of scrimmage. Turley gives to Slade Caldwell. He stops short of the first down. Leading the tackle is like Jamie Morris, who is slow to get up. Also over there, Cam Phillips and Keon Stallings. Well, I tell you, if I'm Valley View, you know, if you're having any kind of third and short, I, I really think it behooves you to know where number 90 is. Uh, and running the football towards him is just – the odds are not going to be in your favor. He is just such a force uh, in being able to hold his gap and play almost the entire that side. So he's he really changes the, the game on that side. Fourth and one, the Blazers elect to go for it. They give it up the middle, and he's got a first down and then some. He's off to the races across the 20. Miles Williams, he slips Miles Williams into the end zone. Touchdown, Blazers. That's Matt McMullen with a – on a fourth and one, a more than a 40-yard touchdown run, 44-yard touchdown run. Well, anytime you have a game with such height, you know, sometimes as a coach you have to take some risks that you wouldn't ordinarily take because you know you're going to have to make something happen to put points on the board. Uh, and Coach Cockrell, you know, dials up a fourth and one that looked to be stopped right at the line of scrimmage and Nettleton unable to wrap up. So touchdown Blazers, they strike first. The point after kick is up, and it's good. That is Brody Dix, and that makes the score 7 to nothing with 8.50 remaining in the first quarter. Blazers strike first. We'll take a 30-second break. More Raider football when we come back on NTV and the EAB Sports Network. This is Keith Baird with Baird Auto Group. There's nothing that brings our community together like high school sports. No matter what the scoreboard says, it's a winning feeling just to be a part of it. At Baird, we want you to have the feeling anytime you come into one of our dealerships. Good credit, bad credit, no credit, no problem. Don't buy anywhere else until you shop at Baird location near you. Don't get a bad deal, get a Baird deal. Because why pay more? Saving service, great selection to you. And we welcome you back to Valley View, where Valley View has just taken a seven to nothing lead over Nettleton. Andy Shatley and Craig Miller here with you at the NEA Baptist broadcast position at Valley View. Get better with Baptist. And Valley View's number 81, or correction, number 18, Matt McMullen just busted a 44 yard touchdown run. Keandre Polk fields the kick. He's across the 30 and shoved out of bounds right about the 38-yard line, it looks like, 37-yard line. That's where Nettleton will take over first and 10. The offense went three and out the first series. Let's see if they can't do a little better this time, Andy. Yeah, like I had said earlier, you know, I really looked for both teams to try to establish a running game. And, you know, both teams can pass the ball. Uh, the, they, they can throw the ball around, and they have uh, – uh, weapons out on the edges, but uh, establishing your running game early to make them honor that is important. Maddox Sampton, the sophomore quarterback, and, man, he has been so good this year. He has got Keandre Pope in the backfield with him. He's moving over to Maddox's left side. In motion is the playmaker, Curtis Smith. It's complete to Q Thompson. Q Thompson makes a move, gets across the 40 to the 42-yard line. It's going to be a gain of about five, second down and five. Pretty nifty run after the catch by Q Thompson. Yeah, I really like that play call. And you have a, a – it's kind of a complex bubble screen out to the uh, the field side here. And you put your wide, widest wide receiver in motion and he turns into almost a crack block on the walked out linebacker. A uh, very nicely designed play. Ball on the left hash, second down and five for the Raiders. Curtis Smith in at quarterback. He gives to Kylan Shelton. Kylan Shelton running off left tackle, and he is brought down at the 
44-yard line. It's going to be a gain of a couple of yards. It'll bring up third down and three for the Raiders. Well, that was certainly a change of tempo and formation and personnel to where you put in your kind of slash. Uh, I guess we can call him slash. I don't know if this goes all the way back to the original slash, Cordell Stewart. I, him, can you remember all the way back that far? I do remember. But uh, he was the original slash, and I see kind of Curtez being that same role here for Nettleton. Curtez is back in at quarterback. It's third down and three for the Raiders. Curtez is going to pass. Run pass option is complete to Q Thompson, but he's tackled immediately by Valley View's number 40, Jet Bradshaw. No gain on the play. Actually, a loss of a yard. It's going to be fourth down and four for the Raiders, and it looks like they're sending out the punt unit one more time. Well, Nettleton's certainly going all the way up and down their uh, formations, their personnel groupings, and throwing a lot at Valley View. And what <laughs> I will tell you, sometimes you could seek your first two series not be fruitful, but it tells the offensive coordinator a lot about what's, what Valley View plans on doing towards them. Curtis Smith's punt lands at about the 38-yard line, takes a Nettleton roll, but not a very big one. Rolls to the 35-yard line, and that's where it's downed by the Raiders, and that's where Valley View will take over first and 10, their second offensive possession. Their first offensive possession, the Raiders stopped them on a big third down and three play, but they went for it on fourth and one and busted a 44-yard touchdown. Matt McMullen with the touchdown run. First and 10 for the Blazers. Carson Turley, the quarterback. Boy, he is a good one. Where's number 10? He's going to pass. It is complete to number 81. He is tackled in the flats by Miles Williams after a short gain. It's going to be a gain of two, second down and eight. You know, uh, a couple weeks ago, I stood on the sideline for Valley View Brooklyn game and had to talk to, to uh, Coach Ron Teed out here in Valley View, and he had talked about Mark Wilson and his first year to play football. He's a basketball player, and he's an outstanding athlete and has converted really well to football. Turley to pass. He's going to run it, and he is – Brought down Cohen Liggins and Blake Brown on the stop. Gained several yards. It's going to bring up third down and three for the Blazers. Well, I really think, you know, if you had to line up who can throw the ball the best, I mean, you're going to have to get your nod to Nettleton. So I suspect that Valley View is going to continue to try to keep the ball on the ground and inbounds and continue that clock running. Jumbo package to the left. They pat they little shovel pass. They got a first down and then some. He's off to the races. He's to the 20. He's to the 10. Into the end zone. Number 21, T.J. Starks with a touchdown run. Well-designed play. It's an inside trap. Shovel pass to your inside halfback. Nice kick out block for Valley View. Nettleton really only had one guy on that side of the field. Uh, Nettleton got caught in really a kind of a formation deficit to where they only had one guy to make the tackle. And unfortunately, hat on a hat for Valley View. That was perfect blocking scheme, and, and Nettleton's unfortunately outmanned on that side of the field. The kick hits the crossbar and no good. So the PAT attempt is no good, but with 5.33 remaining in the first quarter, thanks to a couple of big runs, a 44-yard run, a 57-yard run, the Blazers have a 13-0 lead over the Raiders. We'll take a 30-second break. More Raider football when we come back on NTV and the EAB Sports Network. For me, rice farming isn't a profession. It's been my life for more than 30 years. And as owner of Delaplane Seed, I've been the region's rice tech leader for more than a decade. Every planting season, I'm in the fields right along with you, and we're figuring out how to make sure bushels mean dollars together. From selecting your hybrid rice to free on-farm delivery and one-on-one -on -one consultation, I'd like to help your rice fields see more profit this season. I'm Terry Gray at Delaplane Seed. Call me today at 870-249-3447. Let's talk about your best rice options. And we welcome you back to Blazer Field, where... Central Dealership Stadium, actually, Central Dealership Stadium, where Valley View has shocked the Raiders with a couple of long touchdown runs here in the first quarter. They lead 13-0. to zero. They have stopped the Raiders three and out, both of Nettleton's offensive possessions, and they have scored on both of their offensive possessions. Let's see if the 
Raider offense can't get something going here. The kick rolls into the end zone. That'll be a touchback. Keandre Pope let it get over his head, and it rolled around at about the one-yard line, and that could have been very bad there, Andy, but thankfully it rolled into the end zone, so Nettleton will take up, take up shop first and 10 at their own 20. Well, once again, uh, you know, Valley View have really kind of, I don't know if they're listening to me, but establishing your running game super important uh, to be able to kind of uh, complement your pass game. Nettleton absolutely has to establish that run game because they have a huge potential for putting lots of points on the board. They have uh, big-time uh, playmakers on the edge. Gives to Keandre Polk. Keandre running right up the middle. He is brought down at the 25-yard line. That's going to be a gain of five, second down and five. I really wouldn't be surprised this third series for Nettleton to see a lot more running uh, because, you know, that's kind of what it takes. You know, you, you know they can throw the football. I mean, Maddox Hampton has almost 1,400 yards passing this year, 20-something touchdowns. He has those two uh, playmakers on the edge. But, you know, if everybody knows you're going to pass the ball, it's a lot easier to play defense against. Mad Dog from the shotgun. He's got Keandre Pope in the backfield with him. He's going to pass. It is complete to Q Thompson. Q Thompson running near sideline across the 30. Should have a first down. It's going to be a gain of five. They're going to move the chains. Nettleton has their first first down of the evening. You know, and these quick screens, jailbreak screens out to the edge, really are kind of glorified sweeps or glorified runs. Is trying to get the ball on the edge. Get the ball in the hands of your playmakers and those two, Q and Cortez on the outside, and let them uh, have the ball in space. That's what Coach Hampton's trying to do. 448 in the first quarter. It's 13 to nothing. Valley View. Nettleton first and 10. Cortez Smith, the quarterback. Cortez going to run it himself, a little option. He keeps it. And he gets it across the 35-yard line. It's going to be marked at the 36. That'll be a gain of five, second down and five for the Raiders. Well, it's got to be confusing for Valley View's defense. You know, you gear up for Maddox Hampton. You kind of have your, your balanced defense kind of looking for him to throw the football. And all of a sudden, Cortez comes in here and all of a sudden runs a speed option at you <laughs> and does a great job of reading that, riding that first option, pulling it, and then getting some nice yards on first down. Something we haven't seen all year for the Raiders. They're breaking it out for this big game. Maddox Hampton, empty backfield, gives it to Keandre Polk. Keandre has a first down. He's still on his feet. He's tripped up about the 50-yard line, falls forward to the 48. First down, Raiders. Nice run by Keandre Polk. You know, it's a, a little bit, a bit of what Valley View ran at him just a minute ago was a nice little shovel pass. And anytime you have your defensive lineman, if you feel like they're making it upfield too fast and they're too aggressive and have their ears pinned back, that's that's when you want to go to that play and a little shovel pass in, almost like a draw. Very effective. First and 10 for the Raiders at the 48. Gives to Keandre Pope. He's running right side. He gets forward progress to the 45-yard line before he's thrown backwards. It's going to be a gain of uh, about three, second down and seven for the Raiders. I really think Nettleton it can run the football tonight and should run the football tonight. And once again, in this series, I, I think this third series is really kind of a – uh, uh, kind of a defining moment to say, can we dominate the line of scrimmage and can we run the football when we want to? Direct snap to Keandre Pope. Keandre running off right tackle, and he is yeah, met at Pope the line of here. scrimmage, thrown back, gain of a yard. It's going to be third down and five for the Raiders. Well, Maddox Hampton is leaving the field, and the personnel groupings puts Curtis Smith at quarterback and then goes with your kind of pistol formation here. So this is one they probably run that speed option again. Got Callan Shelton and Pope in the backfield. Gives to the Pope. Pope running the right side, and he is tackled over there. That's number 66, Dedrick Bournes with the tackle. It's going to bring up fourth down and five for the Raiders. The ball is in Valley View territory. About the 43-yard line. We'll see if the Raiders want to go for it here. That uh, that speed option play really doesn't look like it is uh, uh, developed and, and as far as the way they read it and such. But uh, now I'm not real sure what's going on as far as yeah, they've we have an official talking to a player and then a flag that was thrown. Throwing a flag over on the Nettleton sideline. It's a dead ball. 
unsportsmanlike conduct against the Raiders. Don't know if it was called on one of the coaches or one of the players, but instead of fourth and five now, it's going to be fourth down and 15, maybe fourth down and 20. And they're going to send the punt team out. So an unfortunately timed unsportsmanlike conduct penalty against the Raiders. It seems to be a little controversial because now you have three Nettleton coaches talking to the head official um, and not real sure they agree with what's going on there. Yeah, Coach Stephen Hampton, he is very hot talking to the man in the white hat. And he is... I would say livid over there, unhappy with the call that was just made. Understandably, as it pushed the Raiders back, they're going to have to punt for the third time tonight. Curtez punt a sidewinder. It takes a Nettleton bounce, rolls out of bounds at about the 28-yard line, and that's where Valley View will take over first and 10. We have got 159 remaining in the first quarter, and the Blazers – have a 13-0 lead here over the Raiders. Well, it would be interesting to see if Valley View continues to uh, keep the ball on the ground. They've had great success with yeah. the ball on the ground, so I'm not sure there's any reason to change your recipe here. Uh, this is going to be a defining moment for Nettleton's defense to see if they can stop the run. Carson Turley, the quarterback, he's got Slade Caldwell in the backfield with him. He's going to pass, throw in near sideline. It's overthrown and incomplete. Intended for number seven, Zakai Irvin, on the defense for the Raiders is the June bug, Derek Island Jr. Well, I can tell you that Valley View caught Nettleton in a cover zero or cover four uh, coverage right there. Both free safety and strong safety were cheating up into the box, and you had one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside, and they got really they got away with one right there. Second down and ten for the Blazers. Turley designed quarterback draw, and he is tackled in the backfield. Cohen Liggins leading the stop. The he might have got back to the line of scrimmage, and I believe he did. Looks like he may have lost six inches. We'll give Cohen a tackle for the loss. It's going to be third down and ten for the Blazers. This is probably one of the biggest downs, uh, really, for Nettleton in this half right here and needing to stop Valley View on third down and get the ball back. 137 to play in the quarter. Turley back to pass. He's throwing it deep, incomplete. He was trying to hit number six, Jackson Harmon, streaking down the far sideline, overthrew him, and it's going to bring up fourth down and ten for the Blazers. And for the first time tonight, they're sending out their punting team. You know, one of the things that we had talked about and Coach Hampton has talked about is how well Nettleton's secondary is going to match up against Valley View's tall athletic wide receivers and Jackson Harmon and Mark Wilson on the outside, and so far they're doing a good job. They really are. Carson Turley is the quarterback. He's also the punter for the Blazers. Back deep for the Raiders is the playmaker, Curtis Smith. We'll see if Turley is tries to keep it away from Curtis. Looks like he kicked it right at him, and he gets out of the way, and it's touched by number 21, that is T.J. Starks at the 26-yard line, and that saved the Raiders' significant field position right there. That ball was still rolling whenever it was touched. Raiders will take over first and 10 from their own 26. Well, last series, Nettleton kind of went with more of a running attack and actually had quite a bit of success, moved the football, uh, stalled out there in the last play, and then had an unfortunate incident that drove him back and forced him to punt. Uh, I would – would be surprised if you didn't see Nettleton once again try to establish that running game. Maddox Sampton, the quarterback, he's in the shotgun. He's got Keandre Pope in the backfield with him. In motion is Q Thompson. He gives to the Pope. Pope running right side. Falls forward across the, the 30 to the 31-yard line. That's going to be a gain of four, second down and six. You know, gains of four on first down are outstanding, and that's what you're looking for. You know, that takes a lot of pressure on the offense, and once you're in, you know, second and five, second and three, uh, you know, it opens up the playbook for your offensive corner at that point. So getting some positive yards on first down is going to be crucial for Nettleton to kind of claw back into this. Blazers lead 13-0 to zero here in the final seconds of the first quarter. Maddox shovels to Keandre Pope. Keandre is met by Carson Winters. 
Ford Progress. He got a yard. It's going to be third down and a long three for the Raiders. Carson Winters is a really phenomenal athlete. I think he was an All-State uh, selection last year, and here he is his senior year, so he's having a very good year, very, very good-looking kid athlete on the field. Yeah, Brian Huff and Carson Winters are their middle linebackers, and both of them very good. And a major reason why Valley View has a very stingy defense. Right now it's third down and three for the Raiders. Play is stopped, and I believe it's going to be the end of the first quarter. Your score, Valley View 13, Nettleton 0, back in 60 seconds with more Raider football on NTV and the EAB Sports Network. Tired of slow internet? Feel like you're stuck in the old days? It's time to catch up with Empower, delivered by Craighead Electric. Thanks to Empower, you don't have to wait for high-speed internet. Our new cutting-edge technology makes our services more reliable and faster than the competition. Call 870-336-0999 to check internet availability in your area. That's 870-336-0999. Empower, high-speed internet for your neck of the woods. Have you had to pay for costly repairs to your AC unit all summer long? More air conditioning will give you a trade-in value or buy back a recent repair up to $1,000. Plus, we have financing available and lifetime replacement warranties on new systems. But hurry before the new government regulations take effect. Call More Air Conditioning today, a Google guaranteed company at 870-336-2023 or visit us at moreac.com. You deserve more. Don't sell for less. First play of the second quarter, they give to Keandre Pope on third down and three, and he is tackled right at the line of scrimmage. It's going to be fourth down and three for the Raiders, and for the fourth time tonight, the Raider offense unable to find the end zone, and they send their punting team out. I will tell you that Coach Hampton and the offensive coordinator, uh, forget my name, Coach Wilson, uh, Wilson, yes, sir. Yeah, they, they, they are being very disciplined on offense. You know, if, if Valley View is going to play two high safeties, they're going to continue to run the football because that's what's called for. Curtis Smith, punt is high end over end, takes a Nettleton Raider bounce across the 30-yard line, and it's going to be downed at the <laughs> Valley View 28, and that's where Valley View's offense will take over first and 10. The Raider defense gave up a couple of big touchdown runs on their first offensive series, Valley View's first offensive series, and that is the difference in this game right now, 13-0. to zero. However, they were able to stop the Blazers on the – Last one. You know, I guess if you're a Nettleton fan and you're up in the stands and you're watching them to continue to run the football and not having success, you get a little frustrated. But if you understand, you know, how many people are in the box and what, what they're showing you on defense, it kind of calls to continue to run the football. They give to Slade Caldwell. Slade Caldwell gains about four and a half yards. It's going to be, we'll call it second down and five for the Blazers. Well, I mean, this, this Nettleton defense, especially the D-line, uh, you know, they're probably a little disappointed because, I mean, I know that their expectations are much higher than what we've seen already on the field. Direct snap to a different quarterback. That's number 21. He's brought down in the backfield. Jamie Morris, Colin Shelton in on the stop. That is T.J. Starks, the quarterback. Or at least the ball carrier on that one. It'll be – a gain of one, third down and four for Valley View. Some of the misdirection that Valley View's been able to run at Nettleton has kind of confused them a little bit on some of their, the where they're, how their blocking schemes are. But at some point, Blake Brown, Jordan Pegram, they're going to figure this out. Pass is complete, and it is beyond the first down stick. Mark Wilson, the receiver, and he made the catch about a yard past the first down marker, was driven back, but they gave him forward progress, first down Blazers. Once again, I had talked about uh, Mark Wilson, you know, his first year playing football and just an athlete. Uh, and uh, Carson Turley, you know, made a ni nice pass uh, beyond the sticks and uh, continued to move the football. Gives the ball to Slade Caldwell, and he is tackled by Jordan Pegram. Gain of one. It's going to be second down and nine. Pegram hit him right about the line of scrimmage and wrestled him down. Second and nine for Valley View. We're in the second quarter, nine minutes and 40 seconds on the clock. Valley View has a 13 to zero lead. Carson Turley from the gun. He's dropping back to pass. Looking downfield, it is complete. 
to number six, and he is into the end zone for a touchdown. Well, Craig, I'm telling you, that's Jackson Harmon, and, and the ball was perfectly thrown. Actually, just a hair underthrown, but the size difference between Jackson and uh, Nelson, uh, cornerback, you're probably talking about six or eight inches there and was able to reach over. It's an outstanding catch. I mean, sometimes you have to kind of tip your hat. That's a 50-50 ball. Carson Turley trying to put it up in the air. There's where only his guy can make a play. It's unbelievable catch and run there. And it gives Valley View a 19-0 lead. The point after kick is good. And so with 9.21 remaining in the second quarter, Valley View has opened up a three-score lead, 20 to nothing over the Raiders. Back in 30 seconds with more Raider football on NTV and the EAB Sports Network. instantly at Plaza Tire Service when you purchase a set of four in stock. Mickey Thompson Baja Legend EXP Off-Road Tires. That's instant savings today at Plaza Tire Service. Plus, you can make the purchase easy on your wallet with a Plaza Tire Service credit card or one of our no credit needed financing solutions. Now's the time to outfit your truck or SUV with a great set of go anywhere, do anything Mickey Thompson Baja Legend EXP Off-Road Tires and save 100 bucks instantly exclusively at Plaza Tire Service. <laughs> When you bank at First Security, you're choosing better for yourself and fellow Arkansans. Better service from friendly professionals who really invest in your goals. Better solutions with convenient tools and smart resources. And better support for the things that matter to you, as well as the communities that matter to us all. Because finding your better at First Security makes Arkansas better too. First Security. Bank better. Member FDIC. We welcome you back to Central Dealership Stadium here at Valley View. Craig Miller and Andy Shatley high atop the field in the NEA Baptist broadcast position. Get better with Baptist. Valley View has a 20 to nothing lead over the Raiders with 921 remaining in the second quarter. Short kick is fielded by Miles Williams, and he falls down at the 35-yard line, and that's where Nettleton will take over first and 10. All right, you're the Nettleton offensive coordinator right here. Andy, what do you do on this series? Well, once again, uh, you know, it depends on the defense. You have to be very disciplined. If you, you know, if Valley View continues to run two high safeties, you know, and you, and you throw the football, sometimes you can put your quarterback in a no-win situation to where there's really nowhere to deliver the football. So you still got to be disciplined. This is a very talented offense, and they can obviously put points on the board. They're averaging 33 points a game. So it depends on what the defense that, that Valley View gives them. Once again, they're giving them two high safeties, and they're going to back out of here. So – Maddox Sampson back to pass. He's looking deep down the field. He's got a man, Q Thompson, but he overthrows him. Q had his defender beat by several yards, but Maddox just overthrew him, and it's going to be second down and 10. Well, I'll tell you, you know, Valley View had a what we call two that rotates down to four coverage, four deep coverage, and the free safety and strong safety slid down into run support, and that's really when you can dump one over their head. So, they dialed up the perfect play, but you only have one receiver, and it's kind of a home run on that, and you kind of put it on him. Uh, and unfortunately, a little overthrow there. So second down and 10 for the Raiders. Maddox Sampton in the shotgun. In the backfield with him is Keandre Pope. He's got three receivers spread out wide to the left, including Curtis Smith and Q Thompson. Nettleton elects to take a timeout. We'll take a timeout with them. With 9-10 remaining in the second quarter, it's 20 to nothing. Blazers, we'll be back in 30 seconds with more Raider football on NTV and the EAB Sports Network. Network. Don't let your credit stop you from getting your next vehicle. Drive your deal to the max at a dealer financing you. Automax of Jonesboro. Hi, folks. Craig Stone here. If you need to upgrade your ride, don't worry about your pass. Come to Automax. At Automax, we have financing to fit your budget with affordable monthly payments and low down payments. Give us a call at 870-934-9200 or speed up your approval by applying online at AutomaxJonesboro.com. And, hey, we buy cars, too, even if you don't buy ours. So if you're looking to buy new, give us a chance to buy yours and ensure you get the most out of your trading. Automax, financing you. Raider football on NTV and the EAB Sports Network returns 
9-10 remaining in the second quarter. The score is Valley View 20, Nettleton 0. It's second down and 10 for the Raiders from their own 35-yard line. Maddox Sampton in the shotgun. He's got Keandre Pope in the backfield with him. In motion is Cordarius Thompson. He and the playmaker are spread out wide to the right. Maddox is going to pass. Over the middle, complete to Curtis Smith at the 50-yard line, and he is brought down just shy of the 50. It's going to be a gain of about 14 first down Raiders. Well, you know, and Valley Views continue to play those two high safeties. On Sometimes they walk them up into run support, and sometimes they back out of there and play two deep safeties. And when they back out of there, the middle of the field is wide open, and that's where you attack, and that was a nice dig route by Curtis Smith. Nice hookup by Maddox Hampton. Uh, that may be the confidence they need to start throwing the football around. They give to Keandre Pope. Keandre Pope running out left side, finds the edge, has the first down, still moving forward. It's going to be a gain of about 13 for Keandre, maybe 14. First down Raiders, first and 10, and they are in Valley View territory at the Blazer 41. Well, once, uh, again, you know, once again, we had talked about, you know, both of these teams can score. And so, you know, you kind of got to take a, a smack in the mouth and say, whoa, those are some pretty good plays, Valley View. Uh, but we have our own, and so continue to be – uh, uh, truthful and respect what you can do. Continue to uh, operate within the confines of your offense, and they'll put points on the board. First and ten for the Raiders. They give to Keandre. Keandre is met after a gain of about two yards and thrown backwards. It's going to be second down and eight for the Raiders. It's going to be very important once again, and I'll reiterate, that Nettleton has to be able to, to run the football. They have to be able to run the football. You can't sit back there and throw the football all night and leave your quarterback exposed to a rush or if they can drop two, two safeties back and there's nowhere to, throw, nowhere to throw the football. So you have to start with the running game. Hampton back to pass. Downfield is complete to Q Thompson. Boy, he is hammered, but he stays on his feet. Took a big hit. He's inside the red zone at the 18-yard line. Big, nice catch by Q Thompson. First down, Raiders. Well, I'll tell you, sometimes as a quarterback, you know, you, you make great throws and the wide receiver drops it. Sometimes you make throws that are questionable and you lead them into a hit. They catch it, you know what I mean? Then you got to go up to them and say, hey, man, sorry about that. Great catch. I think Maddox will have that conversation with Q after that one because that was a great catch by Q Thompson. Hampton gives to the Pope. Pope bounces out left side across the 15-yard line. He is brought down. It's going to be a gain of three. Second down is seven. Well, this is a nice balanced attack that we expected to see out of Nettleton as far as their run pass option. You know, once you start establishing the run and having success, you're going to see – uh, these throwing windows come wide open in the middle of the field. Less than seven minutes to play in the second quarter. The score is Valley View 20, Nettleton 0. Maddox Sampton dropping straight back to pass. It is incomplete, intended for Curtis Smith at the five-yard line, thrown over his head. It's going to be third down and seven. Well, I tell you, as a former quarterback, I will say that is the hardest throw to make is a quick out to the field. Uh, I don't know how many other options they – that Maddox has or where his progression is, but your shorter throw is if you can throw to the top side of the field there. Uh, I know you're trying to get it to your playmaker and you love having the ball in Cortez's hands, but that is a long throw for a quarterback. Maddox Hampton in an empty backfield. He's got three receivers spread, receivers spread out wide to the left. He's got the Pope spread out wide to his right. He's going to pass. Now he's – Rolling out to the left, throws it into the end zone and overthrown, incomplete, out of the back of the end zone. The Curtis Smith, the intended receiver, is going to be fourth down and seven. Well, that you know, kind of that that play kind of kind of got blown up there at the beginning. Uh, Maddox trying to extend the play, slides out to the left, extend the play because you know you have playmakers out there. He's looking for Curtis in the back of the end zone, and you want to try to throw it to where only your guy can catch it. A little overthrown, but once again, you live to play another day, and this is definitely four-down territory. So this is a huge play for Nettleton. They need to put points on the board. No doubt about it. As they trail by 20, 20 to nothing to score. Fourth and seven, the ball on the Valley View Blazer 15-yard line. Maddox Sampton in the gun. He's got Keandre Pope in the backfield with him, and Nettleton elects to take a timeout. That will be their second timeout of the first half with 6.39 remaining in the first half of play. Nettleton trailing the Blazers 20-0. We'll take a 30-second break. Back with more Raider football on NTV and the EAB Sports Network in 30. 30. 
Don't let your credit stop you from getting your next vehicle. Drive your deal to the max and deal financing you. Automax of Jonesboro. Hi folks, Craig Stone here. If you need to upgrade your ride, don't worry about your past. Come to Automax. At Automax, we have financing to fit your budget with affordable monthly payments and low down payments. Give us a call at 870-934-9200 or speed up your approval by applying online at automaxjonesboro.com. And hey, we buy cars too, even if you don't buy ours. So if you're looking to buy new, give us a chance to buy yours and ensure you get the most out of your trading. Automax, financing you. Big fourth down play coming up as we are here in the second quarter, and Valley View has a 20 to nothing lead over Nettleton, but Nettleton has the ball, fourth and seven on the Blazer seven on the Blazer 15 yard line. Maddox Hampton, the quarterback, in the shotgun. He's got Keandre Pope on his right hip. Mad Dog, he's going to pass. It is intended for Q. Thompson is incomplete. Good play over there by the Blazers, number 13, Jay Mormon, to knock that pass down, and it's going to be a turnover on downs. Valley View's defense holds. They will take over first and 10 on their own 15. Well, I can tell you, when executed correctly, you could, you, you could kind of tell where that play was going to uh, uh, evolve at. Uh, Q Thompson kind of had a short split there at the top, trying to create some space to run that quick out, uh, running it right to the chains. It's one of the toughest throws as a quarterback because you're trying to throw to a spot before the wide receiver comes out of his break and unfortunately couldn't connect there. So the Blazers take over first and 10. Speed sweep. It's sniffed out immediately by Jordan Pegram. He tackles Slade Caldwell for a big loss. It's going to be a loss of looks like five, six, maybe six yards. It's going to be second down at 16, and that's the quick cat, Jordan Pegram. Can you imagine if you're Slade Caldwell getting a handoff and coming around and you see Jordan Pegram right there just bear hug you? You're like, please don't hurt me. Just put me down on the ground, please. <laughs> Number 90 doing damage in the backfield. Second down at 15 for the Blazers. Turley, the quarterback, he's dropping straight back to pass. Far sideline, it is intended for number 81, Mark Wilson, but it's incomplete. Incomplete pass stops the clock at 5.55. It's going to be third down and 16 for Valley View. Now they get, you know, another thing that I just talked about was that to the field quick out. Uh, there's just not many high school quarterbacks that can make that throw, and you see two very good quarterbacks, you know, at Nettleton and Valley View both trying to make that long field out. That is a very tough throw and catch for a quarterback in the high school level. Third and 16, they give to Caldwell. He's met immediately by Blake Brown, the All-State linebacker with a tackle for the loss and an outstanding defensive stand by the Raider defense. And it's going to be fourth down and 18 for Valley View with 542 remaining in the second quarter. The Blazers up 20 to nothing, but statement stand there by the Raider defense. You know, Craig, before the game, that's the kind of uh, defensive stands and reaction that we kind of expected to go into this game. If I would have told you that uh, before halftime it was 20 to nothing, I don't think that either one of us would have believed that. No, I sure wouldn't have for sure. From the middle of his end zone, Carson Turley punts it, and it is rolling to the 44-yard line, makes it about to the 45, and that's where the ball is downed by the Blazers. Nettleton will take over first and 10 from the Valley View 45-yard line. You know, once again, both of these teams averaging, you know, right around 33 points a game. So, you know, what the question would be, you know, can, can these teams put points on the board? Absolutely. The question is, is when are they going to put points on the board? Are they going to put their points on the board spread across the game? Is Valley View going to put, you know, 20 points in the first half and not in the second half? So, sometimes you can have first halves that look absolutely not, nothing like the second half. Maddox Hampton back to work from the gun. He gives to Keandre Pope, running left side, running behind Kylan Gates. Gets about four yards on the gain. It's going to be second down and six. Well, this is a crucial, crucial drive and a series for Nettleton. They must put points on the board. You know, going into the half 20 to nothing versus 20 to seven is a totally different conversation. 4.51 to play in the second quarter. Maddox Hampton with two receivers spread out wide to his right. He's rolling to his right, looking downfield, throws. It is incomplete, intended for Q Thompson, and it's going to be third down and six for the Raiders. Great job by Maddox Hampton extending that play, waiting for that uh, drag to come all that. That's a backside drag coming all the way across the field, and Q Thompson 
Um, I will tell you that, you know, you're not going to see that on the replay, but the defensive player for Valley View kind of jumped right in front of Q right there at the last moment, and that made that, that catch much more difficult, and it glanced right off his hands. Third down and six for the Raiders. Maddox Sampton in an empty backfield. Would figure this is definitely two down territory, so the Raiders have two downs in which to get six yards. Hampton drops back to pass. It is complete. I believe that was Q Thompson who made the catch there. Actually, that's Curtis Smith. He's got the first down. Good throw, good catch. Maddox Hampton, Curtis Smith. You know, we kind of call that a Y stick and Y being your stand-up tight end walked off of your tackle there. It, moving Curtis Smith actually on the inside makes it a lot easier for for Maddox to see him, and Curtez is a very big wide receiver. It can kind of square that up and play basketball right there. That We may see more of that. Gives to Curtez Smith, and he is brought down in the backfield. Good tackle by Jet Bradshaw. He falls forward to about the line of scrimmage. It's going to be second down and 10. Well, you can definitely tell that uh, Coach Wilson's trying to put the ball, you know, in the hands of his playmaker. Uh, but I suspect that you're going to see Curtez either motion in or try to get to that inside position a little bit more often to be able to be seen. Second down and 10, empty backfield for the Mad Dog, rolling out right, throws downfield. It is incomplete, intended for Q Thompson, right about the goal line, overthrown, and it's going to be third down and 10 for Nettleton. Yeah, he, he's looking for uh, – I think it was Curtis Smith once again in the corner in the end zone. Uh, I don't know if it was either that or Q. Q was it Q Thompson? Q. Yeah, okay, yeah. But uh, once again, Maddox trying to find somebody open in that rollout, but his most success has been really in the middle of the field. And Q is hobbling off the field. Well, I didn't see that at the end. He must have come all the way across the field. I yeah, don't know he, if he had hurt himself over there on that pass attempt and yeah, looked like it he was definitely hobbling off the field and so it's third down and 10 for the Raiders they trail 20 to nothing ball on the 32 yard line of the Blazers Maddox Hampton back to pass it is complete to Keandre Pope he breaks a tackle spins across the 20 yard line nifty run after the catch Keandre Pope has a first down for Nettleton well I will tell you what sets that up is the respect that Valley View has for Curtis Smith when he's out wide you only had two receivers on that play and Curtis actually ran what we call run him off run the court cornerback off run the free safety off and that tailback swing was wide open for. First and 10, they give to Keandre again, finds a hole, goes through it, and is brought down at about the 12-yard line. That's going to be a gain of five yards, second down and five for the Raiders, 2.54 on the clock. I'm going to tell you a little story. That play just a minute ago with where uh, uh, Keandre Pope caught the ball. Maddox Hampton and I had a conversation about that play three weeks ago at Nettleton talking about letting that play develop and reading that defense. He did it perfectly on that, so I'm taking credit for that last one. <laughs> Maddox back to pass, incomplete, intended for Curtis Smith in the front corner of the end zone. It's going to be third down and five. 2.32 on the clock. Valley View has a 20-0 lead over the Raiders here in the second quarter. Still plenty of time to put points on the board for Nettleton. This is four-down territory. Wouldn't be surprised to see Nettleton run the football here and then follow that up with a potential pass. He got two downs to get five yards. It's third down and five for the Raiders. Maddox Sampton in an empty backfield. He's going to pass. Rolling out to his right. Looking to the end zone, he throws it incomplete. Intended for Curtis Smith. He might have just been throwing the ball away, Andy. In any event, it's an incomplete pass. It's going to be fourth down at five for the Raiders. Yeah, uh, the, the scramble to this side of the field really wasn't fruitful because Curtis Smith, he's been bracketed all night by Valley View. I mean, if you're going to have one receiver set on this side of the field, you're going to have two Valley View defenders on him all night long, and they're going to try to shut him down. So fourth down and five for the Raiders. One of the best ways to get Curtez involved is to motion him in and get him into the middle of the field. Maddox Hampton, the quarterback, with Pope in the backfield. 
Big fourth down play right here. Mad Dog is going to pass. It is complete to Curtis Smith at the three-yard line. He dives over the goal line into the end zone. Touchdown, Curtis Smith. Touchdown, Raiders. Well, I hope Coach Wilson's listening to me because, you know, that, that really is the void for Valley View's defense when they're trying to play too deep back there. But, you know, to try to get the ball to Curtis when he's way on the outside, it's been difficult for Maddox Hampton. But, but motioning him in, slanting across the middle, running these deep digs. Uh, when he plays one-on-one -on -one with the free safety, we feel good about that on Nettleton's side of the ball. Joseph Newhung on to kick the PAT. It's up and it is good. This so is good. there, is a, flag on the there is a flag on the play. The score is 20 to seven if the kick stands. If it's against Valley View. Actually, they waving the flag off. So the PAT kick is good no, by Joseph Newhong with 2.15 to play in the first half. Your score is now Valley View 20, Nettleton 7. Back in 30 seconds for more Raider football on NTV and the EAB Sports Network. Halloween is just around the corner, so make American Made General Store your ultimate candy stop. The name says it all. Everything you see in our store is manufactured in America, including our candy. Come in today and get your new shipment of gummy eyeballs, gummy body parts, juju pumpkins, and chocolate-covered Halloween pretzels. American Made General carries over 5,000 American Made products from almost every state. Come shop one of our locations in Pocahontas, Brooklyn, Rogersville, and Conway for your next trick-or-treat. We welcome you back to Raider football on NTV and the EAB Sports Network. 215 remaining in the first half. Nettleton has just scored a touchdown. They've cut into the Valley View lead. The score is now Valley View 20, Nettleton 7. If you're just tuning in and you're a Nettleton fan, you're like, whoa, what happened? But I can tell you this, this game is far from over. Antonio Almarez, short kick. It's fielded at about the 35-yard line. Must have been a fair catch. And number 40 for Valley View, that's Jet Bradshaw, made the catch. Going to be first and 10 for Valley View. Ball is marked at the 35-yard line of the Blazers. We'll call that touchdown pass the, from Maddox to Curtis Smith, the Domino's Pizza delivery of the game. Might, you can make game night even better by ordering Domino's Pizza online at dominoes.com or from the Domino's app. We greatly appreciate Domino's Pizza sponsoring Raider football on the EEB Sports Network. Blazers offense back to work. Carson Turley in the backfield. Going to run it himself. He's tackled from behind by Jordan Pegram. He's able to escape his grasp enough to gain about four. It's going to be second down and six. Yeah, Jordan kind of got caught with his hand in the cookies yard there. He he actually slanted down in front of the, the right tackle and, and caught himself on the wrong side of the block and then had to actually run the hump to get back to the quarterback. It, that, that, that little cheat right there, he's going to learn from that. You're going to have to maintain your edge out there. Carson Turley gives to Caldwell. Caldwell's met in the backfield. Kylan Shelton making the tackle. Caden Newson was the first one to make his presence known back there. No gain on the play, maybe even a short loss. It's going to be third down and a long six for Valley View. And this Raider defense is starting to play a whole yeah, lot Yeah, very similar situation to where very disciplined Kyle, uh, Kylan Shelton there stood his, stood his ground and holds that edge right there and not letting Carson Turley get on the edge. And you you force him back to your help. And so that's the kind of defense you're going to – the contained defense that will help. 108 to play in the second quarter. Valley View up 20-7. to seven. It's third down and six. They give to Slade Caldwell. He's trying to find the edge. He is – he does find it, gets some positive yardage, but I believe he is a little bit short from the first down. Going to be fourth down and a long one for Valley View. Fourth and two. You never really know what Coach Cockrell is going to do. I will tell you this. This is an interesting location on the field. 
and an inter interesting momentum that Valley View has. And they're going for it right here on fourth and two. They are potentially going for also it. go for a hard count here too and call timeout and kick, a, kick uh, and punt here. So I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if they didn't go a hard count. Yeah, and they're gonna they're gonna call timeout with 51 seconds remaining in the second quarter. We'll take a 30 second break with them. Valley View takes a timeout. They have a 27 20 to seven lead over the Raiders. Looks like they're about to punt the ball away. Back in 30 with more Raider football on NTV and the EAB Sports Network. Sports Network. Now you can enjoy the great taste of Japan in downtown Jonesboro. Bamboo Japanese Cuisine has all your favorites from steak and chicken to seafood and sushi. Bamboo also has house poke bowls, or you can build your own bowl. Bamboo Japanese Cuisine with hibachi, sushi, and seafood is open Monday through Saturday for lunch and dinner, and discounts are available for students. So stop by and dine in with us, or log on to BambooJapaneseCuisine.com and like them on Facebook. Bamboo Japanese Cuisine on the corner of Main and Huntington in downtown Jonesboro. Raider football on NTV and the EAB Sports Network from the Central Dealership Stadium at Valley View. Craig Miller and Andy Shatley calling the action for you tonight. Fourth down and two for Valley View. Now it looks like they're going to punt the ball away. Miles Williams goes back deep for the Raiders. Carson Turley, the punter for Valley View, he stands on his own 30. There's 51 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Timeout. Nettleton. Play is whistled dead, and Nettleton elects to take a timeout. That's their third timeout, and I tell you what, we'll just keep it right here and um, talk with Andy Shatley uh, during the timeout. 20 to 7, the score. 51 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Nettleton's gonna get the ball. It, kind of an interesting call right there, well, calling the timeout. I, I will tell seconds. you that this is an interesting location on the field on whether or not Valley View would choose to try to do some sort of fake punt, uh, draw them off sides, try to run as much of this clock as possible. Uh, but also Nettleton has to figure out whether or not they're going to try to play for some sort of a return. Do they think that they're going to fake punt? Are they going to leave their defense on the field? Are they going to go into punt return and put their punt returner back? I mean, so there's a lot of things that have to be decided here, you know, and I, and I think what you're seeing is, is they're going to leave their defense on the field um, thinking that N uh, Valley View potentially may try to go for here on fourth and two. They're in their punt formation. But Nettleton's defense is on the field. A high snap. Turley kicks it, and it low line drive kick. It takes a Valley View. It takes a Nettleton roll, and it is uh, finally touched by Valley View at the 32-yard line of the Raiders, and that's where Nettleton will take over first and 10 with 40 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Yeah, and as you alluded to earlier, calling a timeout there is kind of – really kind of shuts the half down. Even if Nettleton gets the ball back, you're only looking at one play here that they've got left. So I'd uh, be curious to see if Nettleton uh, tries to do some sort of a trick play or if they're just going to run the football and go into halftime down 20-7. to seven. Curtis Smith, the quarterback – excuse me, Maddox Sampson, the quarterback, passes to – Q Thompson, Q gains about 10 yards and runs out of bounds, stops the clock at 33 seconds, and it'll be a gain of nine, second down and one for the Raiders. Well, the only way you can stop the clock here is for either the quarterback to clock it or for the wide receivers to get out of bounds. And so if you're Valley View, you're trying to push everything to the middle of the field. This is where you can sneak up on somebody and get somebody loose in the middle of the field like a Curtis Smith. Curtis Smith is spread out wide right. Maddox Sampton drops and back to pass. Pocket collapses. He rolls to his left, continuing to look downfield. Throws. It is intercepted. Intercepted by Valley View, number 13. And that is Jay Mormon with the interception. Valley View will take over first and 10 from the Raider 40, 20 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Well, Maddox Hampton trying to make something happen, keeping the play alive. Uh, unfortunately, put the ball up for grabs there. Jay Mormon, I believe that's his third interception. He leads uh, Valley View with interceptions. Uh, good athlete and made a play on the football. Uh, this kind of game just took a turn here now uh, on a short field of Valley View with a couple of timeouts and 20 seconds left in the half. They're going to look to score. Carson Turley look at, dropping straight back. Now he's going to run, and he is – Brought down by Keon Stallings. Jordan Pegram also with a hand on him. It's going to be um, – he might have got back to the line of scrimmage. It's going to be second down and ten for Valley View. They elect to take a timeout. 
Actually, that was a loss on, on the play. We'll call that a quarterback sack. Second down at 11. 15 seconds remaining. We'll take a 30-second break. Valley View leads 20-7. to 7. 15 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Back in 30s. More Raider football on NTV and the EAB Sports Network. Sports Network. A-State football and the Social Jonesboro are the perfect winning combination for game day. The Social has an amazing, delicious, fantastic, and tasty menu that goes perfect for pre- or post-game. Plus, the official Red Wolves away game watch party takes place at the Social. What we're saying is, it does not get any better than the Social on Red Wolves game day. The name says it all. Get Social at the Social and get ready to howl with fellow A-State Red Wolves fans on every game day. The Social at Greensboro Village in Jonesboro. Raider football on NTV. Turley rolls out to his left, goes out of bounds with nine seconds remaining in the second quarter. The score is 20 to seven. Valley View with the lead. It's gonna be third down and long for Valley View. He might've got back to the line of scrimmage. It's third down and 11. Well, Valley View, Gavin, one more timeout, nine seconds, really. You're looking at one more play. Uh, the, the play is to continue to protect the football whether or not you score or not is kind of irrelevant at this point going into the half. Turley passes over the middle, incomplete. Looked like it might have been deflected at the line of scrimmage. Certainly had the, that type of look about it. Four down and 11, the incomplete pass stops the clock with four seconds. Yeah, I, th I think if I'm Valley View, I, maybe you know if you kind of look at that play tomorrow, you may go back and go, maybe we just run the football there, and now you're at fourth down, and you've left a little bit of time on the clock, and you're being forced to run one more play. Fourth down and 11. The ball on the Raider 38-yard line. Valley View going to try one more pass. Turley steps up. Now he's going to run the ball. And he's across the 20, but he's brought down. Fumble on the play. But I believe they're going to say he was down. In any event, the uh, horn sounds and the clock strikes zero. And that's the end of the first half. Your score at the half is Valley View 20, Nettleton 7. Valley View will take, will get the kickoff in the third quarter. We'll take a five-minute break, and when we come back, we will have the halftime show brought to you by Cavanaugh Auto Group. To see their complete inventory from the comfort of your home, log on to CavanaughCars.com. We have a very special mystery guest on the halftime show. Don't you go anywhere, folks. Can't wait. You're not, you're not Can't wait. You don't know who it is. I can't you? wait. It's, it's going to be awesome. Mr. Guest coming up when we come back. Raider football on NTV and the EAB Sports Network. Back in five. Demo Smokehouse Barbecue on Johnson at Hilltop and on Main Street across from Jonesboro High School. Now, I'm from Memphis, and I know barbecue, but there are people from Memphis that travel to Jonesboro to sample, taste, and enjoy Demo's Barbecue. No kidding. They come from Memphis, so no need to go anywhere else. Right here, the best barbecue is at Demo's. Any of the ribs, any of the plates, you can enjoy it all at Demo's Smokehouse Barbecue. My mouth is watering. Your vehicle is a personal and important investment. At Central Collision Center, we're more than collision repair. We do everything from minor paint touch-ups and windshield replacements to framework. We're committed to customer satisfaction and provide the highest quality of service. At Central Collision Center, we provide honest and expert auto care and offer a written lifetime warranty and on-site rental car arrangements. Stop by or give us a call today to schedule your free estimate. Central Collision Center, professional, convenient, reliable. Find Central Chevrolet on Stadium and online at centralcollisionctr.com. Whether you're a Replacing an old appliance or remodeling your whole kitchen, the appliances you need are right around the corner with GE Appliances at Tucker's Appliance Superstore in Jonesboro. Shop timeless designs and time-saving features on the appliances that are built to last in the busiest homes. Visit Tucker's Appliance today and upgrade your home your way with GE Appliances and your local experts. Shop Tucker's Appliance today and save. Tucker's Appliance. Pico Food says good luck to all the players, coaches, cheerleaders, and marching bands taking the field tonight. Under the lights, it's not about who's in your path, it's about who's in your huddle. And Pico Foods is a proud teammate and supporter of local communities and the state's agricultural producers. Learn more about Pico Foods' mission to support producers in Arkansas and Missouri by calling David Durham or James Chester, 870-202-7101. In Alabama, Mississippi, call Craig Bird or John Taylor Hickman, 601-670-9383. Twenty-five years of memories, twenty-five years of smiles, opportunities, and friends. 
25 years of community because of you. We forged long lasting partnerships that have made our communities better. We can all agree that a lot has changed in 25 years, but our promise to always be a true community bank remains the same. Our roots run deep. Our commitment to you runs deeper. We are celebrating 25 years of first community bank and the best is yet to come. Member FDIC, equal opportunity lender. Your medical needs are personal and the way you manage those needs should be personal as well. The team at Southern Home Healthcare is local, knowledgeable, and courteous, giving you the customized care you and your family deserve. When facing breathing challenges, the on-staff respiratory therapists at Southern Home Healthcare provide support and guidance just for you, and you can sleep better with the help of their CPAP and BiPAP therapy. Plus, treat your strains, sprains, and pain with the help of Southern Home Healthcare's high-quality bracing devices. Go online to southernhomehealthjonesboro.com. No matter what the season, it's always a great time to go to Wings to Go. Whether it's football, whether it's basketball, whether it's baseball, whether it's wrestling, whether it's anything, the wings, the salads, the hamburgers, everything they have at Wings to Go is always flavorful and it's always ready. All that has to happen is you come down and enjoy them. Happy winging from Wings to Go. Follow me on a new healthcare journey full of possibilities. Experience world-class care delivered by friends, family, and neighbors right here in your community. Bringing industry-leading technology to you, not the other way around. Your health record, your appointment scheduling, and your medications all in one place. And your lab results delivered the instant they're recorded. Do we look at healthcare differently? Absolutely. Experience the difference and you will too. NEA Baptist, healthcare for the next century. Bump it up at First National Bank. Now offering two CD specials with competitive interest and a one-time bump during the original term of the CD with no penalty. That means if you sign up and the rate goes up, you can bump it up. A 16-month CD at 2.51% annual percentage yield or a 26-month CD at 3.01% APY. Visit fnbank.net slash specials to lock in your rate today. Offer valid as of 9 2022 Penalty for early withdrawal. $1,000 minimum opening balance to open. Rates subject to change. Member FDIC equal housing lender. Get huge savings now at every Kavanaugh dealership. Kavanaugh has a great selection of late model, low mileage, certified pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs. And most are still under factory warranty. We have every man, every model, so you're sure to find the vehicle you want. And when you buy it, Kavanaugh, every new and used purchase comes with one year free maintenance. Plus, we buy cars. Bring a vehicle, get a check. Come see us today at one of our dealerships or go to KavanaughCars.com. And we welcome you folks to Central Dealership Stadium here at Valley View in the NEA Baptist broadcast position, Get Better with Baptist. I'm Craig Miller, and I am the voice of the Nettleton Raiders. The Raiders trailing this game at the half by the score of 22-7. Welcome to the Kavanaugh Auto Group Halftime Show brought to you by the Kavanaugh Auto Group. If you want to see their complete inventory from the comfort of your home, just log on to KavanaughCars.com. We have a very special mystery guest that we will be unveiling here in just a, a matter of moments. Before we do, however, let's recap this game. It got off to a very bad start for the Raiders. The um, Raiders elected to, they won the coin toss. They elected to put their offense out on the field first. They received the opening kickoff. Valley View was able to hold them three and out. Nettleton punted the ball away, and they looked like they were going to hold the Blazers. They had them, um, they held them on a big third down play, but then on fourth down and one, Matt McMullen took the ball, got the first down, was not finished. Whenever he finally did stop running, he found the blue paint of the end zone, a 44-yard touchdown run with 8.50 remaining in the first quarter. And Valley View's first offensive possession, they scored. The PAT was good. That made the score 7-0. to zero. Nettleton's next possession, it was another three and out. The Valley View defense stifled the Raider offensive attack. And they punted the ball away in Valley View. Much like the first drive, they had a long touchdown run on a big third down uh, conversion. They got the first down and number 21, that's T.J. Starks, he just kept right on running. The ball was on the 43, he ran all the way to the end zone. I've done the math in my head thanks to 
Jim McDaniel and Charlene Jernigan, my Nettleton education. That's 57 yards. A 57-yard touchdown run by T.J. Starks with 5.33 remaining in the first quarter. Made the score Valley View 13, Nettleton 0 because the PAT was no good. It hit the crossbar and fell harmlessly to the turf. No good was the PAT. But at the end of the first quarter, Valley View led Nettleton by the score of 13 to nothing. Second quarter, Valley View scored first, a 60-yard touchdown pass from Carson Turley to Jackson Harmon. Jackson did a very good job of wrestling the ball away from the Nettleton defensive back. He won that battle and then was able to maintain his footing and scampered all the way to the end zone, a 60-yard touchdown pass with 9.21 remaining in the second quarter. The score was 20 to nothing, and there was no joy in Nettleton. However, the Raiders came back with 2.15 remaining in the half. Nettleton's Maddox Hampton, he hit the playmaker, Curtis Smith, with a 12-yard touchdown pass. Joseph Newhung's um, PAT kick was true, as it has been the vast majority of the times this season. And Nettleton trailed 20 to 7. Nettleton got a defensive stop. The defense really came alive as the game went on. They got a stop. However, a turnover by uh, Nettleton, an interception, gave Valley View one last gasp at finding the end zone. Thankfully, the Raider defense held, and we went into the halftime break with Nettleton trailing Valley View 20-7. to And that is where we stand right now. You're listening to the Kavanaugh Auto Group halftime show. Again, if you want to check out their complete inventory, all you got to do, even if you're in the comfort of your own home, all you got to do is go to KavanaughCars.com. i tell you what we'll do. We will take a four-minute break. Make it a three-minute break. We'll take it a three-minute break. When we come back, we will have our very special mystery halftime guest. Don't you go anywhere, folks. You have tuned in to Nettleton TV, EAB, Raider football on Nettleton TV and the EAB Sports Network. Back in three with our Mr. Guest. Guest. The home team at Jonesboro Orthopedics and Sports Medicine is proud to welcome Dr. Asa Schneichel. Dr. Schneichel's an Ace State alum and is Northeast Arkansas's only joint revision surgeon, specializing in several forms of joint replacement. He joins the Jonesboro Sports and Orthopedics team with more than 40 years' experience in getting you back in the game. So if you have a sports injury, just some nagging aches, or even need help with concussion management, call JOSM at 932-1820 to schedule an appointment. Jonesboro Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, excelling in our field so you can excel on yours. You is your family here? Did every July 4th here refinish the floors here twice? Sized up your daughter's boyfriends here? Waited in the doorway all day when your son was coming home on leave. This place has given you all you've dreamed of and now it's giving again in the form of a gourmet kitchen and the quietest dishwasher known to man. Realize your dream with a home equity line of credit from Simmons Bank. Dreams realized. SimmonsBank.com. Member FDIC equal housing lender subject to credit approval. It's a mix and match special now at all Jonesboro area Domino's Pizza locations. Choose any two for $5.99 each for carryout or $6.99 each for delivery. How about a medium two-topping pizza, oven-baked sandwich, pasta in a tin, Domino stuffed cheesy bread, salad, bread twist, marble brownies, and so much more. Switch it up for lunch or dinner for the whole game. The mix and match special with any two for only $5.99 each for carryout or $6.99 each for delivery. Only at your Jonesboro area Domino's Pizza locations. Elite Eye Care has a new Jonesboro location that is now open at 2100 East Highland near the Old Indian Mall. Hey, it's Brandon Baxter, and the team at Elite Eye Care is who my family trusts for their personal eye care. Elite Eye Care specializes in eye care solutions for patients of all ages, and you can be assured that your family is cared for like their own. Schedule your appointment at EliteEyeCareAndOptical.com or call 972-6040. Elite Eye Care at 2100 East Highland in Jonesboro and at 1515 West Kings Highway in Paragool. Elite Eye Care, your vision is our focus. A few years ago, a friend of mine was going to town to have lunch with the president of a college that he supported. He was stopped for speeding and the trooper asked for his driver's license and Jim said, I don't have my driver's license, they're in my billfold at home. The trooper asked why his billfold was at home. He said, I'm having lunch with the college president and the last thing you want to take with you is your billfold. Best price, best service. Glenn Sane and God bless our kids. 
Jackson Merchants Bank announces the lobby of our new branch in Jonesboro is now open. The drive through is an MVP center with live video tellers 7 to 7 weekdays and 9 till noon on Saturdays. So in addition to our beautiful bank on Highland, you can also visit our new branch at the corner of Southwest Drive and Parker. More MVPs, more ATMs, more me banking at Farmers and Merchants Bank, member FDIC. And we welcome you back to the Kavanaugh Auto Group Halftime Show. Once again, to see their complete inventory from the comfort of your home, log on to KavanaughCars.com. Thanks to Kavanaugh Auto Group for sponsoring Raider football on NTV and the EAB Sports Network. Here at half, the Raiders trail the Blazers by 13. The score is Valley View 20, Nettleton 7. Our very special guest on the halftime show Kavanaugh Auto Group halftime show mystery guest um, we felt like it would be wise to keep his identity a secret so we can make this big reveal are you ready the mystery guest is Andy Shatley Andy Shatley <laughs> the mystery <laughs> guest nobody saw that coming uh, apparently the, the you went through probably four or five different people and say can't do it can't do it can't do it well I'm not gonna lie to you coach Fowler did say he couldn't do it it That's just, not surprising at all because I remember you got him last year, and I don't yeah. think it was a great talk. I think, I think that you continued to try to press him on how talented you were in high school. It made him very uncomfortable. He doesn't seem to remember things like I do. Uh, I, list, I overheard that conversation last year, and that, that was probably the most awkward he's ever been on the headset trying to come up with something positive about your high school athletic experience. I'm thinking hopefully one of these days maybe senility will kick in for Coach Fowler and he will start remembering things the way I remember things. I don't think so. The dude's sharp as a tack, and I, I don't know if he's ever going to retire. I don't know either, and I know he still works out every single day. He's, he's in shape. But how weird is it that he – where he is now? You mean at Valley View? The athletic director yeah. at Valley View. It's such a – you know, when we talk about this rivalry, and I don't know what you're going to ask me, but it's so weird that, that these two schools, you know, back in the day, we probably were not intertwined so much. But, man, the number of Nettleton alumni that are sitting in the stands here at Valley View, I mean, there is a slew of when I was really kind of expecting them to stand up during our alma mater and start singing because yeah, they, they should have. have. They should have been singing. There's an all, awful lot of Nettleton alumni over here on the Valley View side of things. So but That's one thing about Jonesboro. Jonesboro has five high schools – in its city limits. And so you're going to see that a lot. You're going to see a lot of people that graduated from Nettleton who their kids go to Jonesboro or like my wife, she graduated from Jonesboro. Her kids go to Nettleton, you know, it's in a, a city like ours. You just, you're going to see that sometimes. And, and uh, that still, you know, it doesn't uh, keep me from uh, wishing that they would have <laughs> their kids at Nettleton. But. Well, I tell you, I, we, we have some great schools in this area and I love to see the friendly competition and, uh, Great kids, great talented kids, and anything that I can do, you know, to help them or to promote them or, you know, kind of what, what, what I do in my business is, you know, in my, in my profession is to help kids. And so that's my passion. That's one of the reasons why I love doing this today. Well, let's talk about that because we do know that this is Physical Therapy Month. October sure is Physical is. Therapy Month. And you are a physical therapist. You work at St. Bernard's Sports Medicine. You're the director at St. Bernard's Sports Medicine. So tell us about St. Bernard Sports Medicine, what services y'all pro provide for our community? Well, you know, St. Bernard has been here for a long time, over 100 years, and we have provided an athletic training outreach program to the local schools probably for the last, I don't know, 15, 20 years. And one of our athletic trainers that's here, oh, well, actually both, you know, both on si both sides of the field tonight, Nick Haywood over on the Nettleton side, and then Kayla Williams is here on the Valley View side. And we take great pride in, in giving back to the community and providing that service of uh, highly skilled uh, medical professionals on the sidelines for pre and post game uh, assessments and to make sure that we keep the kids safe. Uh, one of the big uh, hot button topics is concussion management and being able to recognize signs and symptoms on the field. And that's one of the jobs of athletic trainers to make sure that athletes are removed from play whenever they don't feel like they're safe. And so, we feel a calling at St. Bernard's to provide that service. That's part of the program that we do. We, the other part of that program is our physical therapy clinics uh, that we, we take care of athletes here at uh, St. Bernard's Sports Medicine. We have two clinics that see a lot of athletes. 
our ASU athletes get taken care of at our ASU clinic out there on campus. And then at our Health and Wellness Institute, that's where our sports medicine main clinic is. Uh, and another Nettleton Raider who's – two Nettleton Raiders who are PTs. Can you name the PTs that are Nettleton Raiders at the sports medicine clinic? Absolutely. I keep up with Nettleton alumni. I know where they are and what they're doing. Those two would be Carly Tennyson Swain. That's right. That's the one. daughter of the great Donnie and Candy Tennyson. Right. Yeah. And the other is going to be Alex – Excuse me, David Flores. D Flo. D Flo. David D, Flores. We grab D Flo, and I, apparently y'all have a, a history. Yeah. Back in the, apparently he has an acting career. Hey, let me tell you something right now, David Flores. You might not know this, but he was an NTV superstar. Well, I did not know that until we started talking to David, and he started working for us at St. Bernard's. A- outstanding physical therapist, and even better person. That whole family is a phenomenal family, and and. You know, Carly's family, too. You know, the Coach Tennyson, you know, my second dad back in high school, he was my offensive coordinator. So, very proud of those two physical therapists. Uh, you know, I'm kind of sliding out of patient care, you know, and handing that baton over to the next generation of physical therapists. Couldn't be more proud. We have another PT, two PTs that are out of our ASU clinic. That's Chris Carter. He's a Lee Panto kid. And then Deidre Sparks, where uh, she's come to us uh, to kind of round out our team. But uh, super excited about, and we also have one other PT, and he's a Jonesburg graduate, Matt Brandon. Uh, so we have five PTs that are doing an outstanding job taking care of athletes whenever these kids get hurt, uh, getting them back on the field, communicating with your doctors and communicating with the athletic trainers and the coaches, making good decisions to try to get these athletes back on the field. But, yeah, physical therapy month in October. It's a lot of, a lot of months in October, but this kind of rounds out our physical therapy month. Uh, Could not be more excited about the decision that I made on a daily basis. Love my field and love my profession. I love promoting my profession. Uh, Lots of kids want to observe what we do to try to see if they would like to become a physical therapist. It's, it's, It's amazing how many kids that, you know, go to physical therapy because they've had some sort of injury, as, you know, you well know in your family, uh, that they – see what we do and they kind of buy into that and they all you know they all want to be physical therapists after they get done with us because we just have such a cool job i mean it's unfortunate that people get hurt but it's almost a ministry as far as the way i feel about it is you know when athletes come to us that are hurt emotionally physically psychologically and spiritually there's something we can do that we can we can change the direction of a kid's life and get them back on track into where they're supposed to be there's no greater feeling uh, in my life than to be able to do that. No doubt about it. I do want to say and always want to say every chance I get how much Andy and the great folks at St. Bernard Sports Medicine helped my daughter. My daughter was uh, a very good volleyball player at Nettleton. Her junior year was cut short by a catastrophic knee injury. And it was everything you could tear in her knee, she tore it. But thanks to Andy and his staff at St. Bernard's, man, Uh, psychologically they helped her physically and physiologically they helped her and she was ready for her senior year she was back better than ever and it's thanks to Andy Shatley and the great people at St. Bernard Sports Medicine and a lot of that I know you would agree is just just superior genetics that helped Gracie well yeah I know her mother well and she's standing here and I I totally agree with those genetics I was was talking about her father so I was talking about that well I, I need to see some proof that you actually had a part in that but she certainly acts and carries herself athletically just like her mother did because her mother was a star volleyball player back in the day also star volleyball star basketball player at Jonesboro High School for sure and and that honestly was a prayer that I prayed whenever I found out we were going to have a little girl and a little boy both I pray for both of them may they please get their athletic ability from their mind (laughs) that was was a serious prayer of mine and I believe the good Lord did answer my prayer and that is uh that is I'm very thankful for that um you mentioned students wanting to be physical therapists what's what kind of job opportunities are there in this this field of work we're hiring right now so i mean it's a little early for some of these high school kids but that just tells you the job opportunities that the the opportunities in this area and nationally there's a shortage of physical therapists and physical therapist assistant because of the work that we do and as people become more active and seek medical care we need more people to take care we right now we're down about three physical therapists that we would hire on the spot if we could find them they're just not there because they haven't graduated pt school yet so emerging field growing field 
Uh, it's a very rewarding field. It's a very uh, appropriately paid field, uh, great benefits, great working hours. Uh, anybody that's interested, you know, most people, I'm pretty easy to get a hold of in this town if their child or, or uh, these, some of these high schools talk, kids were, you know, seniors were talking about where they're going to college, what they're going to major in. If anybody would like to discuss that, I'm easy to get a hold of. I'd be happy to sit down and explain what it's like to be a physical therapist and how you become one. That's awesome. That's Andy Shatley, St. Bernard Sports Medicine, and we are privileged to have him as our special guest. And, Andy, let's, um, let's talk about this game tonight. What are the, Ra the Raiders trail the game 20-7 to here at halftime. What are the Raiders going to have to do in the second half to get back in this game? Well, I, I think that you're going to definitely see uh, some big changes uh, as far as the uh, formations, personnel groupings on the offensive side of the ball, and also where and how Curtis Smith gets involved in the ball, uh, on, on where they position him, how they try to slip screen him, get him into the middle of the field and get the ball in his hands in open space. Because he's a definite playmaker. Uh, Maddox Hampton giving him time to be able to deliver the football and trying to change up some of the formations and get Valley View out of this too high safety uh, position because – you know, if they can sit back there and Nettleton's unable to run the football, it's going to be very difficult to throw the football for Nettleton if they're running against a cover two. So two things, relocating and moving Curtis Smith around in the formation and personnel groupings and the ability to run the football successfully is the key to Nettleton's uh, putting points on the board in the second half. And I will say last year, you know, there were several opportunities for Nettleton that rolling into halftime and they're behind – behind substantially in one game, if I remember correctly, uh, to where uh, they had to come roaring back in the second half to make a game. So th this is not uncommon territory for this coaching staff. And if you talk about the, you know, the minds that are in that locker room, I feel real good about their ability to make adjustments at halftime. So it be a very exciting second half. I believe you were referencing the Mountain Home game. Correct. We were behind by a couple of touchdowns. That's correct. Against Mountain Home, the Raiders came back and win. Correct. Uh, last, week, last season. And, man, uh, I know you've, uh, because of your work and having to be down on the field, you haven't been able to join me in the broadcast booth this year. But what a fun season that was last year. Absolutely. You know, that. That, that was one of the, the uh, sensational seasons that I've ever been a part of. Uh, still thankful that, that you know, you have a, able to witness that from the, the eye in the sky up here and to be on the, uh, the radio and the TV with you and to be able to see that magical season of 2021. I will always remember it for as long as I live. I'll remember being able to call one of a historically good season for the Raiders, and I appreciate you joining us. Appreciate you being our halftime guest. Now I want you to put on a different hat to be our uh, football analyst. Let's get back to football. Because the second half is just about to start. Antonio Almarez is kicking off for the Raiders, and it is a short kick. It's filled at the 30-yard line. Nettleton's kickoff coverage. Down there quickly, but a good cut by Caldwell, and he's across the 40-yard line before he's tackled. It's going to be first and 10 for the Blazers at their own 42. Well, you know, uh, if I'm Coach Johnson at halftime, I'm looking at my defense to say, okay, the defense that I saw in the first half is not what I expected. You've got some big horses that are on the defensive line. You have one of the best linebackers in the state of Arkansas and Blake Brown right now. I suspect that they're going to start dialing up some serious pressure on defense. Turley gives to Caldwell. He's running the left side, and he has a gain of about five Caldwell or six before here. he is brought down. The murder man, Cam brought Phillips, on Morris. the stop, as well as Jamie Morris. It's going to be Jamie a gain of six, play, second and four. Second down, four. Once again, you know, you go back to the first half in Valley View, the first thing they did was establish a running game, and that's how they're starting the second half. Second and four for the Blazers. They – Quarterback pulls, he runs, and he's got some running room. Turley got, has the first down. He's well in the Nettleton territory. Finally brought down about the 30-yard line by Turley Kylan Turley Shelton. Big field. gain by Carson Turley. Brought Move the chains, first Turley. down Blazers. Valley View Turley. caught Turley. Nettleton in a, a front that was shifted to the other side of the field. And when Carson pulled the ball, there was really – he was looking for a defensive end to be there to read. There was nobody home for Nettleton on that play. So first and 10 for the Blazers at the Raider 30. Carson Turley again is going to keep it. This time he is folded up by 
Blake Brown and Keon Stallings, a gain of one. It's going to be second down and nine. Well, you know, when you have Jordan Pegram on one side of the football, Valley View has already kind of started to say, hey, we're going to try to run away from that guy. Yeah. And that's a, they've had some success running the opposite of wherever Jordan's at. Turley back to pass, throwing it toward the end zone. It is incomplete. Brandon Alexander on the coverage. The receiver, number 81, he wanted a flag. That's Mark Wilson. No flag was forthcoming. It'll be third down and nine for the, Raider, for the Blazers. Well, once again, these two big uh, athletic wide receivers of Valley View are kind of mismatched for Nettleton's cornerbacks. And, you know, these 50-50 balls for – Carson Turtle will be able to throw the ball up. you got to love that as a quarterback sitting out there and your wide receivers are 6'2", 6'3", 6'4". Third down and nine for Valley View. Carson Turley rolling to his left. He's going to run it. He's across the 20, has the first down. Good read there by Carson Turley and gain of a, maybe 10, 12 yards first down Valley View. One thing that I had always talked about, Cameron Scarlett last year, you know, one of the things that I always said was, Whenever you're accounting for folks, a lot of times the one person that you don't account for on the defensive side of the ball is the quarterback. Yep. And Carson Turley, much like Cameron Scarlett, can make a defense pay for not accounting for him. They're in the red zone. It's first and ten for the Blazers at the Raiders' 17-yard line. Gives to Caldwell. Caldwell shoots a hole, still on his feet, brought down at the 10-yard line. It's going to be a gain of eight, second down and two for Valley View. Well, I will tell you, Slade Caldwell doing a great job of running the football. He is very slippery, and Nettleton struggling to wrap up on defense. You see a couple of Nettleton defenders actually lunging at the, at the ball carrier, but you have, they're going to have to wrap up Slade Caldwell, or he's going to bounce off and continue on. Second down and two, Turley. Quarterback draw. He's running and angling for the end zone. He has stopped short. It's going to be first down and goal to go for the Blazers at the Raider three-yard line. Very nice first series out of the gate for Valley View. This is exactly what they're looking for to set the tone in the second half. Nettleton's having difficulty responding on that defensive line and linebackers. It's really, Carson Turley's kind of been this whole series. Turley gives to Caldwell this time, running right up the middle. He stops short of the end zone. Blake Brown with the tackle. It's going to be a gain of one, second down and goal to go from the two. One of the things that uh, defensive coordinator uh, Coach Johnson is going to have to talk about after this series is when they run that speed option, who has the quarterback? And uh, those two speedy guys in the backfield, Slade and Carson, have really created fits for Nettleton's defense this second half. Second down and goal to go from the two-yard line. Turley going to keep it himself. Lunges for the end zone. I believe he's just a, about a yard short. Kylan Shelton with the stop. It'll, be, it'll bring up third down and goal to go from the one-yard line for Valley View, who lead the Raiders 20-7 to seven here in the third quarter. Well, it looks like uh, Valley View is going to switch out their personnel groupings here. Uh, looks like in completely different – Offensive scheme into the game now. I would I would refer to this kind of as their heavy package. Third down and goal to go from the one. They're under center, trying just to rugby scrum it into the end zone to get the push, and it is Carson Turley into the end zone for a touchdown. Well, that was certainly a very successful uh, and productive series for Valley View. Nettleton really needing to come out and set the tone on defense to try to right the ship a little bit, but to un, unable to. And that, Valley View, that was a great series for Valley View, being able to move the football primarily on the ground the entire time with Carson Turley and Slade Caldwell. Dick's on to attempt the kick for the point after, and the kick is good. With 8.07 remaining in the third quarter, the score is now Valley View 27, Nettleton 7. We'll take a 30-second break. Be back with more Raider football on NTV and the EAB Sports Network. 
Nettleson High School Athletics is brought to you by Gateway Tire and Service Center and Toyo Tires. Where there's always one thing you can count on, we go the distance for you. Before you hit the road for a trip across country or across town, drop by Gateway Tire and Service Center and check out the great deals on Toyo Tires. Whether it's tires or auto repair, you can always count on one thing. At Gateway Tire and Toyo Tires, we go the distance for you. At Gateway Tire and Paragold and Jonesboro, we go the distance for you. Raider football on NTV and the EAB Sports Network. Craig Miller and Andy Shatley here at the NEA Baptist broadcast position. Get better with Baptist and the Valley View Blazers have scored on the opening drive and they've opened up a 27-7 lead over the Raiders. So Nettleton trailing by 20, and if they're going to have one of those second-half comebacks that we talked about, they're going to have to go to work offensively. The kick is a good one into the end zone and out of the back of the end zone. That'll be a touchback. I believe it was off the hands of Keandre Polk, but that is a touchback, and it'll be first and 10 for the Raiders at their own 20-yard line. Well, it, you know, here th this is that series, a defining series of first uh, offensive series coming out of the second half, trying to figure out what that identity of the offensive scheme is going to be. Are, are they going to have this balance attack? Are they going to be able to establish a line of scrimmage, run the football uh, emphatically, and then being able to throw off of that? So let's kind of see if there's some adjustments made in, in the halftime. Maddox Sampton gives to Keandre Pope. Keandre Pope lunges forward for a gain of – three it's going to be second down and seven you know when you have two high safeties like Valley View does and they're kind of playing like a two man under I mean that that just screams you got to run the football because you only have six men in the box at that point so once they bring that seventh and potentially the eighth guy in the box then you start talking about throwing the football Maddox Sampton in the gun with Keandre Pope in the backfield with him he's going to pass looking for Q Thompson, over the middle is incomplete. No flags, and it's going to be third down and seven for the Raiders. This is the second time that they've had a one receiver post pass go over the top of what, what appears to be a cover four for Valley View. And, and when, when we go back and watch the film tomorrow, uh, Coach Hampton and, and his son Maddox, they're going to look at this, and they're going to see that safety bite on that and where that ball can be thrown is a little bit more over the middle of the field and leading the wide receiver away from that on that post when you know your safeties are actually coming up into the box empty backfield for Maddox on a definite passing down third down is seven he's back to pass it is complete to Curtis Smith Curtis over the middle runs to about the 30, he's got the first down across the 30-yard line, first down Raiders. Well, that was a great job by kind of buying some time, sliding left by Maddox Hampton. And once again, uh, Curtis Smith getting open in the middle of the field, that seems to be the most success for Nettleton to be able to, to connect those two up. Great job by Curtis Smith finding the change and getting that first down. First and 10 for the Raiders at their own 31-yard line. Maddox Hampton again in an empty backfield. <clears throat> to pass. He's rolling out to his right under pressure, and he runs the ball. His Malachi crunched over on the far sideline, but he gains about five yards. <clears throat> did, did you say um, Malachi crunch? I guess I'm, I'm going to have to know what that means. I don't think that I've ever heard that said on the radio before. It's a happy days reference. Uh, the Malachi brothers. Holy Crash cow. Derby. Yeah, I, pre I appreciate that explanation. That's all the way from the 1970s. Okay. Second down and five. The Mad Dog with Pope in the background with him. Three receivers spread out wide left. Passes to the Pope. It's incomplete. Going to be third down and five. Well, I can tell you, there, there just doesn't seem to be the, the gelling and the timing and the confidence and the cadence on the offensive side of the ball for Nettleton, I don't know if they, they just don't, don't, don't feel right as far as the matchups. But connecting up, there just seems to be that lack of confidence and, and composure on the offensive side of the ball tonight. Q Thompson spread out wide to the left. Keandre Pope in the backfield with the Mad Dog. Boy, he just a blitz wide open. Fumble on the plays. Maddox got drilled. And it looks like Valley View does recover. Recover the 
man that forced the fumble was Matt McMullen. And who was it that Barnes recovered for for the Blazers as he blitzed from the blind side and just had a free shot at Maddox, hit him hard, knocked the ball loose, and Valley View with the turnover. Well, that was a huge play there in, the, in, in tonight's game. You know, Nettleton needing to put some sort of momentum and, and put a nice drive in a series together, and that that really is a, a tough play to have somebody come up you know, running free on the backside. As a quarterback, that's the scariest part, to have somebody running free on your backside. Blazers back to earth. They give it to Caldwell. Caldwell across the 30-yard line. It's going to be a gain of three, second down and seven with 6.01 to play in the third quarter. Valley View up 27-7. to seven. I suspect at this point you're going to get an absolute lot of Carson Turley and Slade Caldwell back to back to back to keep the ball in between the tackles and to keep the clock running here in the second half. Valley View definitely slowing things down here. Second down and seven. Carson Turley gives to Caldwell. Caldwell makes a move, moves across, runs across the 25-yard line. That's where he's brought down. It's going to be third down and two for the Blazers. Well, Slade's doing a great job of running the football, and you know he's he's kind of, he's not very big, but man, he's a, he he kind of reminds me of like a work done. How quick he is, and how hard he hits the hole, and he keeps his feet running. And, and, and the first person that makes contact with him typically is not the one that brings him down. He was very patient on that one. He let the play develop, let the hole open up before he spurred it through it. Valley View back with their, you know, we saw that kind of what we call too heavy, uh, heavy uh, personnel grouping here with third and short. They give to the running back number 18, and he is has the first down. Cam That's Phillips the tackles him. That's McMullen. Yeah, Phillips on the stop, but not first the down Blazers. for the Blazers. They have the ball inside the Raider red zone. It's first and 10 at the Raider 19. We are in the third quarter, 440 on the clock. The clock is rolling. Valley View has a 27 to seven lead. They have led the entire game. Turley is gonna keep it himself, bulls his way forward, finally is Stopped by Blake Brown. He gains a couple of yards. It's going to be second down and eight. You know, really surprising that we haven't called his name out more tonight. I will tell you, uh, you know, running away from Blake Brown and Jordan Pegram, I mean, that, that's definitely if you're Valley View's offensive side of the ball, those are the two guys that you're trying to figure out, okay, where are they and how do we run away from them? Smart plays for sure, staying away from number nine and number 90, the Nasty Boys. Under pressure, Carson Turley rolling to his left, just throws it away, and it's going to be third down and eight. Smart play there by Carson Turley getting rid of that one. Yeah, as a quarterback, you know, like we say, live to play another day, especially when it's second down. Uh, you know, you, 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 you talked about this before the game, it, taking care of the football and not doing risky things with the football. Valley View's done, done an outstanding job of taking care of the football tonight. Well, and we said before the game started, we felt like whoever took care of the football the best is going to be the team that wins. Valley View sure has done a very good job taking care of it. It's third down and eight for the Blazers, and they're going in with that jumbo package again. Turley rolling. Look out behind him. He is tackled. He is tackled in the backfield by big number 90, Jordan Pegram. Quarterback sack number 90 sniffed it out, and the big cat with the attack, Jordan Pegram. Well, I would love to see like a slow-mo of that. I don't know if our camera crew can get that, but I could just imagine putting some sort of sound to that because he just coming from behind him looked like a big massive jaguar about to jump on his back there. But, yeah, that's, that's the last person on the field tonight that I would want hunting me down from behind. Like a, a gazelle being chased down by a lion, Jordan Pegram. He is a quick defensive lineman, a man that size moving that fast. That's not fair. Fourth down and long. Blazers are going to go for it. Turley is complete. It's a first down. Marked down at the one-yard line is Mark Wilson. And boy, that's a tough break for the Raiders. Fourth and long, and they're able to convert it. It's going to be fourth down and goal to go at the one. Mm. It's a great job by Carson Turley stepping up in the pocket and throwing with a, in a lot of traffic there. Uh, a streaking Mark Wilson over the middle of the field. 
perfect throw, perfect catch, and, and Valley View really is clicking on all cylinders tonight. Nettleton has has run into a buzzsaw this evening uh, here at, at Central Dealership Stadium. First and goal they give to the running back, and he has stopped short Lejavian of Irvin, the goal line. It's uh, Lejavian Irvin, the ball carrier. He stopped inside the one-yard line. Inside inside the one yard line. It's going to be second down and goal to goal. Ball is marked on the one-yard line, and Turley and Irvin in the backfield. Turley under center, and Turley, they're going to shove him forward. Is he into the end zone? I believe he might have been stopped just a little bit short. It's going to be third down and goal for the Blazers. Now then, they're signaling a touchdown. So touchdown, Valley View. Carson Turley, his second touchdown of the quarter. Correction, third down, third down. Well, correction, that is not a, that is not a touchdown. Well, that back judge, sure enough, looked at us and, and uh, raised up both arms. And then he said, psych. So it's third down and goal from about the one foot line and Valley View elects to call a timeout and talk over their plan. We'll take a timeout with them, a 30 second break with 142 to play in the third quarter. Valley View's up by 20, it's 27 to seven. Back in 30 seconds with more Raider football on NTV and the EAB Sports Network. Hello, I'm estate planning and elder law attorney, Chad Oldham. More and more often today, I hear clients tell me that the only thing golden about the golden years is that it takes all the gold to grow old. Don't be a victim of rising health care and nursing home costs. Be prepared. Have a plan. Contact us today to find out how we help our clients protect and preserve assets for family and future generations. The Oldham Law Firm, 603 Southwest Drive in Jonesboro, or visit us on the web at oldhamlawfirm.com. We are welcome you back to Raider football on NTV and the EAB Sports Network. It is third down and goal for Valley View. They have the ball on about the one foot line of the Raiders. Carson Turley, the quarterback, LeJavian Irvin, the running back, gives it to LeJavian, and LeJavian is into the end zone. A one yard touchdown run for the Blazers. Well, I'll tell you, if you're a Valley View Blazer fan tonight, uh, this could not go any better for you. Uh, you've got some seniors on the Valley View side of things that uh, th this really is just a perfect scenario for them here on senior night at the uh, Central Dealership Stadium here. Every time Nettleton tries to do something different, different personnel groupings or move the football in different fashion, Valley View seems to have an answer for pretty much everything. Brody Dix on to kick the PAT. The kick is up, and it is good. The point is good. What's the score? Valley View. So with 137 24. to play in Nettleton. the third quarter, Valley View has opened up a 34-7 to lead over Nettleton. We'll take a 30-second break and be back with more Raider football on NTV and the EAB Sports Network after this 30-second timeout. Timeout. This is Keith Baird with Baird Auto Group. There's nothing that brings our community together like high school sports. No matter what the scoreboard says, it's a winning feeling just to be a part of it. At Baird, we want you to have the feeling anytime you come into one of our dealerships. Good credit, bad credit, no credit, no problem. Don't buy anywhere else until you shop at Baird location near you. Don't get a bad deal, get a Baird deal. Because why pay more? Saving service great selection to you. Raider football on NTV and the EAB Sports Network. Craig Miller and Andy Shatley here in the NEA Baptist broadcast position. Get better with Baptist. Valley View has a 34-7 lead over the Raiders here in the third quarter with a minute 37 to play. The kickoff goes out of bounds. They'll throw the flag on that, and they give Nettleton first and 10 from their own 35-yard line. So Valley View led 20 to seven at the half and they have scored 14 unanswered points here in the third quarter, opened up a 34 to seven lead. 
Well, if you're Nettleton faithful, you got to look at the stats and say, okay, both of these teams are averaging about 33 points a game. Valley View has now reached their average. Nettleton has not. So if they both reach their average, we're going to have a tie ball game going into the fourth quarter here in a little bit. I like the way you think. Pass complete to Q Thompson. Q has the first down. He's across the 50-yard line, still battling forward, finally slung down inside Valley View territory. It's going to be first and 10 Raiders at the Blazer 47-yard line. You know, another thing that you're you're watching for as a coach here is the resiliency of a young team. And I had talked about how young this team was. You have a lot, lots of sophomores and juniors as playmakers on this offensive side. No doubt about that. First down and 10 for the Raiders. They give it to Keandre Pope. Keandre bounces out left side. He's across the 40, about the 36-yard line. Looks like he has first down yardage, a gain of 12. Move the chains. Raiders on the move here. And I want to go back to that resiliency. You know, not everything's going to happen your way uh, when things, you know, when you're going through a season. There's going to be some times to where you get punched in the mouth. And as a head coach, and I'm Coach Hampton, I'm really starting to watch my team. How do you handle yourself? whenever you're facing adversity and things aren't going your way. How do you, do you go back to your fundamentals? Do you play football the way you're taught to be played and let the game continue to come back to you? Maddox Hampton pass complete to Caleb Tedder. Caleb Tedder has the first down. He's brought down at about the 23-yard line of the Blazers and Nettleton's offense clicking here in the third quarter. You know, it'd be amazing. You'd be amazed what happens. You know, you can go a half and three quarters and, and nothing going right, and all of a sudden everything just clicks. Offensive coordinator kind of feels out, you know, what personnel groupings work and where the soft spots are in the defense. They give to Keandre Pope. Keandre patiently waiting for a hole to open up. Not much of one. He falls forward to the 20-yard line. It's going to be a gain of two, second down and eight for the Raiders. A score here in this possession would really kind of uh, lift the spirits of the Nettleton fan base and also this offense who – like I say, you know, averaging 33 points a game, they're not used to looking at the scoreboard and seeing seven points going into the end of the third quarter. It would also lift the spirits of the TMC, to be honest with you. <laughs> You're going to have to explain who the TMC is to all the listeners. I think they know. Okay, just checking. Yeah, that's how I refer to myself. I refer to myself in the third person. A lot of great men in history have done that. Second down and eight, Maddox Sampton. Pass complete to Curtis Smith, has the first down. He's inside the 10-yard line, battling his way forward, slung out of bounds. Looks like about the 8-yard line. It's going to be first down and goal to go for the Raiders. When we come back, that's going to be the last play of the third quarter. Heading to the fourth quarter, your score is Valley View 34, Nettleton 7. Back in 60 seconds of more Raider football on NTV and the EAB Sports Network. Sports Network. Isn't profession. It's been my life for more than 30 years. And as owner of Dela Plains Seed, I've been the region's rice tech leader for more than a decade. Every planting season, I'm in the fields right along with you, and we're figuring out how to make sure bushels mean dollars together. From selecting your hybrid rice to free on farm delivery and one on one consultation, I'd like to help your rice fields see more profit this season. I'm Terry Gray at Dela Plains Seed. Call me today at 870 249 3447. Let's talk about your best rice options. Tired of slow internet? Feel like you're stuck in the old days? It's time to catch up with Empower, delivered by Craighead Electric. Thanks to Empower, you don't have to wait for high-speed internet. Our new cutting-edge technology makes our services more reliable and faster than the competition. Call 870-336-0999 to check internet availability in your area. That's 870-336-0999. Empower, high-speed internet for your neck of the woods. And we welcome you back to Raider Football on NTV and the EAB Sports Network. Start of the fourth quarter, it's 34-7. to Valley View with the lead over Nettleton, but Nettleton has it first and goal to go. About the eight-yard line of the Blazers. Maddox Hampton in the backfield with him is the Pope, Keandre Pope. Maddox is going to run it himself. Changes direction. He is hit hard right about the nine-yard line and thrown Maddox backwards. So not much Jeff gain, Blaster. if any, on the play. It's going to be second down and go to go, but there is a flag on the play. It's usually thrown in the area of holding, and that looks to move Nettleton even farther back, which is uh, kind of the story for tonight. Once they get a nice series going and and something of this nature moves them in a negative direction, they certainly don't need any help getting in a negative direction tonight. Yeah, it'll be first down and goal for the Raiders. And after the 10-yard penalty, the ball should be right about the 19-yard line. And 
those holding penalties in the red zone, the they are penalty, killers. The ball be placed at the 18-yard line. Ball on the 18-yard line. First and goal for the Raiders. They got four downs to get 18 yards. Little reverse. They get it to the playmaker, Curtis Smith, running left side, trying to find the edge. Good containment by the Blazers, but he is able to move Good forward to the 15-yard line, a Run gain of three. Second down and line. goal for the Raiders at the 15. Yeah, tried a little misdirection, and uh, Curtis Smith ended up having to run about 44 yards to get four yards. Uh, but but it is a positive play, and that's uh, Nettleton can build off of that. S really, really need another score here to start moving them in a in a in a feasible direction and, and to make this game interesting. Second down and goal from the 14. Maddox Sampton in an empty backfield. Three receivers to his left, two spread out to his right. He's going to pass. It is incomplete. Intended for Q Thompson. Very good defensive play there by Valley View's number 18, Matt McMullen. Brings up third down and goal for the Raiders. Yeah, I will tell you, that's a phenomenal play as the walkout outside linebacker uh, reading the eyes of the quarterback and started drifting back. Otherwise, that's an easy reception. Um, outstanding defensive play there to get his hands on that football. So third and goal for Nettleton at the 14-yard line of the Blazers. Curtis Smith in at quarterback. He's going to run it himself. Option. Curtis keeps it, and he is tackled in the backfield. Very good tackle there by Valley View's number 40, Jet Bradshaw. Loss on the play. It's going to be fourth and goal from the 19. Well, you can tell Nettleton's offensive uh, coordinator, they're just trying to dial – anything up that looks like it's going to be a potential positive play or, or a matchup that looks good. Um, man, it's just going to – it's a tough night on the offensive side. And, and you got to kind of take your hat off to Valley View. They're putting some serious pressure on Nettleton all over the field. So fourth and goal for the Raiders. Maddox Hampton passing in the end zone is intercepted. Intercepted by the Blazers. Number one, he is dashing down the near sideline. He's – Knocked out of bounds, tackled by Garrett Campbell. About the 30-yard line, maybe, and there's a flag on the play. Let's see what that is. It's going to be a block in the back on number 18 for Valley View on the return. Okay, so, that'll so it'll be at the at, after the play. So it'll be spot foul, 10 Correct. yards from the spot of the foul. And we'll tell you where the ball winds up. But an interception, is that number one that caught that? De Dequan Galloway, is that right? Personal yep. Yeah, I want to make sure. It's a senior. Blindside block. Blindside block. So it is a personal foul. That should be a 15-yard penalty, I believe, Andy. Blindside block. And the officiating crew definitely did not like what they saw there, called it personal after foul. The penalty, the and after the penalty, it will be first and 10 first for the Blazers, Blazers from their own 16-yard line. Well, it definitely wasn't malicious. Uh, I mean, I watched it, uh, 18 just kind of tried to pick somebody off right there on that return, and he, you know, he hit the guy. That, it's one of those defenseless players is what they're saying. It's a, it's a call now on the high school level to protect people. Ball is given to Caldwell, and he is stopped by Keon Stallings and Blake Brown. No gain on the play. Actually, a loss of a couple. It's going to be second down and 12. Well, once again, if, you know, if I'm on the Nettleton side of the ball and I'm Coach Johnson, I'm challenging my defense. You know, you're down, you know, 27 points here with 10 minutes to go. It's going to be a huge hill to climb, but uh, – you need to start putting together some momentum and some positive plays starting leading into potentially next Friday night season because that, that, that game, you know, this, this game's super important and unfortunately it's kind of getting away from Nelton. But if this same sentiment and confidence level and, and level of play starts leaking over into next week's preparation for win, uh, you're looking at affecting the, the rest of the season and how it works out in the playoffs. Carson Turley on the carry on second down. He's able to turn nothing into a little bit of a something. Lunges forward for a gain of a couple of three yards. He was hemmed up in the backfield. Did a good job of getting loose. It's third down and 12 for the Blazers. 
number 21 in at quarterback for Valley View. He is going to run it. Big Jordan Pegram is there to stop him right about the line of scrimmage. Also in on the stop for Nettleton is Gonzo, Nathaniel here. Gonzalez. Gain of one. It's going to be fourth down and ten okay. for the Blazers, and they're going to send their punt team out. Well, nice defensive series for Nettleton. Once again, you're looking for anything to build off of. You need some positive plays. Uh, th this defense that uh, we really thought could step up tonight and shut this uh, high-scoring Valley View team down, that's not the team that showed up and we had struggled tonight. I mean, that's happened sometimes. You, you know, that season that we talked about last year for, you know, Nettleton, I mean, this is how they treated everybody. Low punt but gets a favorable roll. And it is downed by Valley View at the 44-yard line of their own their own 44-yard line. And so Nettleton will take over first and 10 with a short field. There is 828 remaining in this game. The score is Valley View 34, Nettleton 7. You know, and, and, and Nettleton's going to go back and watch this film uh, tomorrow, like maybe tonight. I don't know how quickly they'll watch this film. And they're going to be disappointed because that's not the Nettleton team that we all expected or they expected. They have very high expectations. But that doesn't take anything away from – the game that Valley View played tonight. Key Andre Pope, the ball carrier, bounces out left side, has close to first down yardage. Looks like a gain of 10. Hancock on the stop for Valley View. It's going to be first and as it's going to be sec yeah, first and they're moving the chains. First and 10 Raiders, the ball on the Blazer 34 yard line. Same sentiment as on defense. We need positive series, we need to connect up, block. Move the football, put some points on the board. So first and ten for the Raiders. In motion is Curtis Smith. Mad Dog passes. Going, aiming for Curtis, intended for Curtis, incomplete. Second down and ten. He is going for a touchdown strike there. Curtis, like he might have had a step on his defender. Ball overthrown just a little bit. Incomplete, second and ten. It's really tough to throw the football. I will tell you, you know, Whenever the defense is kind of playing a little softer, they're ahead by quite a few points. They're not near as aggressive to jump some of those routes. It is very tough to get the ball over their head at that point. Second down and 10 for the Raiders. Maddox Sampton gives to Keandre Pope. Keandre bursts left side, and he is stopped after a gain of nine. It's going to be third down and one. Good run there by Keandre Pope. Yeah, then this is a great opportunity for Keandre to really kind of shine. I mean, it, what, what, what we thought was is Nettleton's going to might establish their run and, and, and the Popester, you know, really getting after it and setting up that pass that really kind of didn't happen tonight. But uh, you can see they're going back to him and say, hey, listen, we need you to get more involved in the offense and putting the ball in his hands. Third and one for the Raiders, the ball on the 25-yard line of Valley View. They give again to Keandre Pope, has the first down, finds the edge on the left side, is run out of bounds at the 20-yard line. It's going to be first and 10 Raiders. Yeah, you, the aggressiveness on the Valley View side of the things certainly has changed. I mean, the, the air and the atmosphere has kind of changed on the field tonight, and you can kind of feel like, you know, this game's starting to kind of wind down. The intensity in which we saw in the first quarter doesn't really exist right here. But once again, positive plays by Nettleton. They need that to move into this preparation for next week. A give to the Pope. The Pope looking for some running room. Has a gain of about one before he's brought down. It's going to be second down and nine. One of the things that I always preach about, you know, if you make it to the field, these plays are on tape. And these plays mean something. There, are, there aren't plays that some mean something and some don't mean something. Here's an opportunity for you to show what you can do. I mean, as long as you get it on film, we want to see 100% effort until the, the horn blows at the end of the ball game. Mad Dog rolls to his right, looking to pass. It's complete to Curtis Smith across the 15-yard line. He's brought down at the 14. It's going to be short of the first down by about three yards. It's going to be third down and a long three. I believe they may even call it third and four. We do have an injured player on the field. Looks like it may be a cramp, and that's thankful. That's one thing that we've not had in this game. We've been injury-free, and Andy, I know as a – uh, physical therapist and is the director of sports medicine at St. Bernard's 
that is sports medicine. That's a very good thing for us to be able to say. Absolutely. You know, we, that's kind of our business, but we definitely hate to see we, – we want to see kids being able to participate at their highest level of function. We don't want – uh, we hate to see kids being able to utilize our services, you know. So, we, you know, when when that happens, it's it's never good, and we under we understand that part of it. That's Dequan Galloway. It looks like he's in he's doing fine. So, best wishes to Dequan Galloway. Fumble on the play. There's a fumble on the play. And Nettleton has it, trying to Pope advance it is the Pope, and he is Keandre Pope brought down about the. 16-yard line, and yeah, it's going to be a top. short loss on the play. It'll be Ball fourth down and six. Yard line brings up fourth down six. Fourth and six for the Raiders on the 16-yard line of the Blazers. Raiders trailing 34 to seven here in the fourth quarter. Maddox Hampton scrambling, throws. It is inter, it is uh, incomplete, nearly intercepted, incomplete, and it'll be a turnover on downs, first down Valley View. They take over first and 10 with 529 remaining in the game and a 34-7 to lead. They'll have the ball on their own 16-yard line. Well, that, that kind of – that was a series that Nettleton really needed to kind of put that put some points on the board. Um, Valley View at this point is going to try to milk the clock as long as possible. You're going to see them run the playcock all the way down to inside of five seconds on each play. They're going to put the ball on the ground probably every every down, try to stay in inbounds and run this thing all the way down to a couple minutes left in the game. Carson Turley, the quarterback, Slade Caldwell is on his left hip. They give the ball to Caldwell, and he is brought down in the backfield. It's going to be Nettleton's number 53 with a stop. Gary. That is Danny Gary. Danny, the sophomore defensive lineman, no play. getting some play in time here is, and makes making the most out of it. So second down and 10 for the Blazers. Yeah, you'll see the quarterback get uh, behind the center, and I'd be curious to see if he watches the game clock. Well, he doesn't. Turley is going to – pass and boy he is just demolished in the backfield by big number 90 Jordan Pegram slow to get up as Turley and as Pegram got him from the blind side and he brought the wood oh man I I, uh, I will tell you I got hit like that one time playing for ASU and we had uh, we were at the homecoming in Idaho and I, we, we ran a, a play action pass and tight end goes out for a play and pretty much nobody blocks the wheel linebacker coming off the edge and he smoked me right underneath the chin never saw him coming and that the toughest hit i took in my whole career and i'm sure carson's down there right now still trying to get his breath because i know exactly what that feels like i can't imagine him you know being hit by big jordan pigram that's just a guy that you don't want to see on the other side of the football no doubt about it nathaniel gonzalez with the stop on the Slade Caldwell run, it makes it fourth down and 15 for Valley View, and they send the punt unit out. And Carson Turley somehow able to be functioning out there after he just had the boom lowered on him by Jordan Pegram. Thankfully, he's all right. He's to punt, standing on the goal line of Valley View. They lead 34-7 to with less than 340 to play in this game. That is a low-line drive punt. And there is a flag that's going to be roughing the kicker against the Raiders. Was that a flagrant or an incidental? I don't know. They're probably going to talk about it. He hit him pretty hard, uh, tried to, to block the punt full speed, but didn't really gauge his angle correctly and ran right into the punter. Well, if it's a five-yard variety, it'll be Nettleton ball. If it's a 15-yard variety, it'll be first and ten for the Blazers. I suspect with them coming to talk to uh, Coach Cockrell, uh, this potentially could be a personal foul. Waiting for the indication from the man in the white hat, the referee. Uh, he's going to call it incidental, and they're going to decline it and yep. take the result of the punt. The running into the kicker will be the call. Nettleton will take over first and ten. With 3.23 remaining in the game, Valley View leads the Raiders 34-7, to and Nettleton will – have time for one more offensive series, and they're going to start inside 
Valley View territory. Ball will be marked at the 48-yard line. Well, how is that on back-to-back -back plays? Carson Turley mm. gets absolutely hammered by Jordan Pegram, and two plays later he punts and gets run into. I think if I'm Carson Turley, I'm like, hey, can y'all just keep me off the field? Let's put the second string guy in. I'm sure the Valley View faithful over here is saying the same thing. Let's not get him hurt. They give to the Pope, and the Pope – uh, gains maybe a half a yard. Gets back to the line of scrimmage, we'll call it. No gain on the play. Second down and 10. No gain on the play. Second down, 10. Clock is at 3.02 and ticking. Valley View with a 27 point lead. They led from the very first, their very first possession, and they never did relinquish that lead. Maddox Sampton back to pass. It's caught by Curtez Smith. Curtez, mm. stiff mm. arms. He's still on his feet. Is tackled out of bounds. That should stop the clock. The He's reception. got close to first down yardage. It depends upon the spot. Eight yard line. Well, that was an impressive play right there by Curtis Smith. He, yeah, it'll be a first down for the he, he made about five people miss on that play. That's going to be a Curtis Smith huddle highlight that he's <laughs> probably going to cut up and put on his highlight for next year. Uh, coming back, he's just a junior, so uh, yep. super excited to see him come back and see what he can do next year as a senior. No doubt about it. Maddox Hampton, a sophomore, coming back next year. And Q Thompson, he'll be a senior next year. They give to Keandre Pope. Keandre is hit in the backfield and – they're going to give him forward progress, but even with the forward progress, there's going to be a loss on the play, a loss of about one. So it'll be second down and 11 for the Raiders. Wasn't able to get out of bounds before his, before his progress was stopped, so the clock is still rolling, 2.15. Raiders trail the Blazers 34-7. Well, I can I can tell you that the Nettleton faithful and the entire coaching staff is is not going to be happy with this outcome tonight. But no. I will tell you the season's not over. They've got a huge huge game next Friday night, and the preparation for this week is going to be super important. Pass is complete to Caleb Tedder all the way down to the twenty yard line. First down Raiders. Good pass by Maddox Sampton and a good run after the catch Tedder by Teddy the Caleb Tedder. Brought down by Jay Mormon. Ball safety, 20-yard line. First so it'll be first and 10 Raiders. Ball on the Valley View 20. 145 on the clock and ticking. And Andy, I would say a, a touchdown here, while it would not alter the outcome of the game, gives a, a little bit of a positive spin after a very disappointing night. Absolutely. They need momentum going into this preparation for this week. They give the ball to the Pope. The Pope is thrown down after about a gain of eight. There is a flag on the play, a couple of flags laying on the turf. That looks like the timing and the location of potential, a face mask and a personal foul probably. Personal foul, face mask against the Blazers. That will be a half the distance to the goal penalty, which should give the Raiders first down and goal inside the 10-yard line. Ball will be at the six. First and goal at the six. 122 to play. 34 to 14 would sound a lot better than 34 to seven. Let's see if we can't get the ball in the end zone here. Well, we got our slash team in there with Curtis taking direct snaps. He's gonna run it himself. Bounces out left, and he gains three or four yards. He stops short of the end zone. Don't believe he got out of bounds. Clock still rolling. It's going to be second down and goal from the two. Maddox Sampton back in at quarterback. He's got Keandre Pope on his right hip. Gives to the Pope. Pope running left side, and he is stopped Raiders just ball short ball. of the goal line. It's going to be third down and goal. Less than 30 seconds on the clock. Third and goal from the one. Nettleton with a hurry up. They give to the Pope. The Pope stopped in the backfield. Number 28, Jamarion Davis with the stop. It's going to be fourth down and go. Eight seconds on the clock. Nettleton's going to call a timeout. And Nettleton is 
wanting to get that touchdown, Andy, wanting to get that touchdown and end this game on a positive note. Eight seconds to play in the game. Battle of you up 34 to 7. We'll take a 30 second break, come back with the conclusion of this game. Raider football on NTV and the EAB Sports Network. Tired of slow internet? Feel like you're stuck in the old days? It's time to catch up with Empower, delivered by Craighead Electric. Thanks to Empower, you don't have to wait for high-speed internet. Our new cutting-edge technology makes our services more reliable and faster than the competition. Call 870-336-0999 to check internet availability in your area. That's 870-336-0999. Empower, high-speed internet for your neck of the woods. Fourth down and goal to go for the Raiders. They trail 34 to seven here and Valley View is going to call a timeout. Eight seconds remaining. We'll just keep it right here. Eight seconds remaining in this game. Valley View has a 34 to 7 lead. Valley View will move on to 8 and 1 on the season, and they will be 6 and 0 oh in conference. Nettleton will drop to 7 and 2, 4 and 2 in conference. Our next broadcast is going to be next Friday night. It'll be senior night at Raider Field. Sure hope to see a great crowd as the Wynn Yellow Jackets pay a visit to Raider Field. And Nettleton will be looking to end the season on a high note against the Delta Swarm. Well, yeah, that's a huge game for next Friday night. Huge game of playoff implications. Looking to end this game on a positive note right now. Nettleton with Curtez Smith, Wildcat formation. Curtez looking to run the ball, and he has stopped short of the end zone, and that will be how this game ends. So Nettleton tried to get into the end zone. Curtez Smith stopped just short, and the – Blazers win 34 to seven. I tell you what we'll do. We'll just keep it right here and move right into the post game show presented by more air conditioning. Make sure you tune in to the ticket radio network Tuesdays at five as we present the more air conditioning offensive lineman of the week. That's right. More is rewarding the guys in the trenches all year long. It's the more air conditioning offensive lineman of the week. Tuesdays at five on the ticket radio network. The Raiders lose this one 34-7. to Let's recap the game real quick, and Andy will talk about the JOSM player of the game for the Raiders. And uh, honestly, it may be kind of a tough thing to, uh, to call, but we'll, uh, we'll, we'll kick it around. We'll see who we'll give the JOSM player of the game to. The Blazers win this one. They outscored Nettleton 13-0 in the first quarter. The team's... Um, scored seven each in the second quarter. The third quarter is where Valley View really pulled away with 14 unanswered points. Nobody scored in the fourth quarter. The final score, Valley View 34, Nettleton 7. And Andy, obviously a very disappointing night for the Raiders as they come to uh, their crosstown rival, the Valley View Blazers, and they are beating, they're, they're beating soundly. Um, your coach Hampton right now, and I know you want to try to bring some kind of positive out of this. Is it possible? And what would you say to your team at this point? Oh, absolutely. You know, there's there's things that are larger than the game of football in how and what way you uh, deal with adversity and, and what happens whenever you get punched in the mouth and things don't go the way you want them to go. Uh, that's so important in developing and continue to develop in this legacy of, of – of, football that he's trying to do and the style of football and the way you approach the game and the way you approach practice and the way you approach uh, Friday nights and the way you approach off season. I mean, it's, it's not, it's not something to where, you know, every time you go out on, on Friday night, you roll it out and you, you roll over everybody. That's not how things are going to happen. And even last season, you know, uh, the way that beautiful season happened ended last year, it did not end pretty. Uh, that Little Rock uh, Catholic or is a Little, Little, Rock Christian. Little Rock Christian came into town, and that it was kind of like this right here. You know, Nettleton had expected to come in and play a different style of football, and they just weren't able to. They they ran into a team that played better than they did that night, and that happens in high school football. And the way you deal with that, and the way you respond to that, is super important. And I can tell you, Coach Hampton is more concerned about how his team is built and what kind of character uh, that that that's inside of them when this when this type of Friday night happens because when it happens, you go to work tomorrow, you go to work Monday, 
and, and you learn from what happens, and then you'll say, okay, who's next, and what do we learn from that, and how do we build on that to make ourselves not only better football players but better men moving forward. Yeah, I love the way you put that. There are more important things in life than wins and losses in football games for sure. I, for one, as a father of a son on this team, very thankful for Coach Hampton, for Coach Wilson, for Coach Tennyson, for Coach Johnson, for the Coach Lovis, for that great coaching staff that are building into these young men. And, hey, nobody goes through life undefeated. That's one great thing about your kids playing sports. They learn life lessons out there on that field. And uh, the Raiders definitely going to go home tonight with their dauber down, going to go home tonight um, dejected after a loss in a game that they definitely um, – expected to come in and, and win um, but that's life uh, life there are unexpected losses and that is uh, you got to get up the next morning the sun's going to come up the next morning the birds are going to sing you got to get up and hit it again the next day we're going to hit it again next week as the win yellow jackets come to Nettleton and take on the uh, the Raiders the JOSM player of the game brought to you by Jonesboro Orthopedics and Sports Medicine getting you back in the game for more than 40 years and Andy I will tell you who I will give it to and then if you disagree we'll just name two players of the game how about that usually we take a break and we talk it over and then name the JOSM player of the game I want to get out of here. I want to uh, to leave the field, so that's why we didn't take a break. But I would give the JOSM Player of the Game award to Jordan Pegram. Jordan Pegram has played great for us all year long, all last year as well. He's a major reason why the Raiders were 10-0 and last year. And Jordan came up very big for the Raiders tonight defensively, made play after play, quarter, had a couple of quarterback sacks, really was large, number 90, great game. He's my JOSM player of the game. Totally agree. You know, and sometimes uh, when you're the caliber of player that Jordan is and you demand, you know, the attention and the respect from the other team, you don't get an opportunity to make a lot of plays. Because if I'm smart and I'm Valley View, I'm not running the football to that guy. Right. I'm going to try to figure out where he's at and we're going the other way. Yep. And, you know, for him to be able to make some statements and some big plays during this game when Valley View's – most likely their entire approach is to run the ball away from him uh, and still continue to be effective and make big-time plays. Shows you what level of a football player he is and will potentially be you know, at the next level. And he's definitely playing on the next level, and he is a difference maker and an outstanding young man. Jordan Pegram, the JOSM player of the game. Heck, we could also give the player of the game to Blake Brown. He's uh, had a big night as well, as he has all year long. Came into the game with 89 tackles on the season, led the team, and that is the best number of tackles ever, 89. So he – I won't say he improved on that. I don't know you can improve upon 89, but he did up his total tonight. So, Jordan Pegram, player of the game, Blake Brown, honorable mention. Andy, I had a great time calling the game with you tonight. I know, um, obviously, when the Raiders lose, the heart of the TMC is very sad. I can't say I enjoyed the game as Valley View wins this from 34-7, to 7, but it was good to call another game with you. Thank you for coming up and taking time out of your busy schedule to, to give back to your alma mater and to, to call the game with me tonight. You know, it's always a pleasure, and, and you know, and I make no qualms about it in this community to where, you know, you hear me holler, go Raiders all the time. You may hear me say that in a public venue, but I support all these kids. You know, I, I, you know, I know lots of these kids. You know, my daughters used to go to school here at Valley View when they were younger and to see – uh, these uh, kids who I've seen grow up. I mean, I, I'm, I'm a huge supporter of Athletics in Northeast Arkansas and anything that I can do to feature any of these kids, promote them, support them, and give them the encouragement they need. I mean, I think that's what we're all here for about, about and that's what these athletic programs are here for. Uh, and that's what we're here for. And so as long as we continue to remember it, the grand scheme of things, you know, they, these are wonderful kids. They're going through this wonderful time in their lives. And they're going to all go on to do other things besides play football. And it's, it behooves all of us to support them in their venue and, and, that, and their journey. And that attitude is one of the reasons why Jonesboro is a wonderful place to raise a family, for sure. want to say make sure you cap your night out by listening to my buddy Will Oswalt on the Kavanaugh Auto Group Friday Night Light scoreboard show. Will's going to have all the scores for you as soon as they go final. He's going to talk to coaches and broadcasters around the area. That's the Friday Night Light scoreboard show. Starts at 9.30, which is about 10 minutes, on the Ticket Radio Network. You can find it 95.3 if you're listening here locally. want to say thanks to James. 
James Lowry, our producer at the EAB Sports Network. I want to say thanks to Andy Shatley, our uh, analyst tonight. Thanks to Lindsay Miller, the boss lady for the broadcast. The director, Cameron Holder. The camera operators, Caleb Robinson, out in the cold Arctic conditions up top, running the up camera. The down camera operators, Caleb Andrews and Jacob Linderman, who's normally our color commentator, but he l graciously gave the microphone to Andy Shatley tonight, and he went down and, and um, ran camera on the sideline. Andy, I know you'd agree with me. This is a uh, – and Jacob ran up camera as well. This is a very good student crew. They do a great job week in, week out. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm super impressed by their ability to put on a professional production, and I, I love the fact that Nettleton – invest and allows this opportunity for the kids at this level to be able to participate in such a production so super cool didn't exist back when we were in high school so that, i think this is really cool for them to be able to put this on no doubt and i appreciate these young men they give up their friday nights every friday night they give it up to hang out with the tmc and miss Lindsay and produce these ball games that's that's huge i really don't think that they're giving up their friday night to hang out with the tmc you don't think that's their I, I, re I really think that you know learning how to put on a, a professional broadcast ranks so much higher than hanging out with the tmc i just put it that way i thought they were wanting to hang out with me that's what i was what i was thinking any event we do appreciate the end we appreciate all of you for listening win or lose raider pride is justified raider, raider pride, pride forever. forever and we will see you next friday night as the win yellow jackets come to uh, take on the raiders at raider field senior night we'll see you then good night everybody and god bless you've been listening to nettleton raider football on 101.3 bob fm presented by nea baptist domino's pizza